welcome back to another Next Lander podcast. I hope everybody out there is safe and sound in the United States, given the quote unquote severe weather that is sweeping the nation. Alex Navarro, how is your basement? Uh, a little damp. Okay. A little damper than it was as of yesterday. We had a very serious rainstorm come through, a lot of wind. Uh, found that there's a little bit of a leak somewhere along the wall behind me here, so we got some water under the carpet, had to cut it up and uh, throw a bunch of towels down last night. That got most of it, but okay. uh, we may have to have someone come in and take a look here. Stop the water. Water. Can't, you can't live with stop it. it. You can can't only hope to it. mitigate it. Or, or move it. Brad Shoemaker, how are you? Did, huh. did uh, San Francisco get any severe weather? We got rain, which by the standards of, of this area now qualifies as a Storm of the storm of the century. <laughs> okay. Any rain at all is. Yeah. I was yes. expecting water in the basement. I'll tell you what. I got water in the basement. I was expecting water in the garage. And I'll tell you what. I'd cut away the floor about three inches away from the wall. So the water in the garage would go under the floor. Mm-hmm. That seemed to mostly work. It's not the greatest solution. No. It's, it's a temporary. It's basically like if you said, I'm getting water on my floor. What if I just got rid of the floor part? <laughs> and then, uh, I have to figure something out there as well. Some kind of French drain solution. Or um, I did try to stop the water coming in. Ain't no stopping that water coming in. It'll- How have we not learned a way yet to just perfectly hermetically seal a house? It's look. Water erodes mountains, man. Water, water, water does. There ain't no stop. You flow. The answer, the answer to that is that nature is more relentless than you and always will be. That's right. Uh, nature is infinite patience, if nothing else, and will find every crack to get into your house. It's amazing. So Nature's you're saying amazing. what we have to do is attack and kill nature. What I'm saying is, what if, what, if, what if we just went and lived in the woods, like outside in the woods? No, what? that's where it can get you the easiest. That's uh, if we stop it, fighting it. You're saying if if you take the inside and put it outside, mm-hmm. yep. okay, yes, yeah. inside outside. Like, what if we made it so that getting water inside wasn't so bad? You know, like it's a feature, not a not a detriment. Like, what I'm if, not been building an indoor fucking waterfall, Vinny. <laughs> That's not a thing. I don't want an indoor water feature in my oh, basement. What I what I'm saying is, why not? What I'm saying is that's a bad idea. (laughs) Let the water flow. Just put a bigger hole in and let the water in. I don't want to let the water in. I don't want to let anything in. I want a force field around my house. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I forget. I think it was Jim Gaffigan or somebody had a joke that was like, if nature's so great, why is it always trying to get inside your house? Which, uh, (laughs) which is like warm in here. That's why (laughs) it just, it's it's that excited. It wants to spread the good word. (laughs) (laughs) It's so cool outside. Why all the bugs want to be in here? Right. Uh, I know I'm with you. I should not complain too much. No, Uh, we can't considering there was actual flooding in my town, like in a few different areas. Uh, I, I think we got off relatively light, all things considered. It's just that now it's like, okay, I was waiting for the thing to happen Uh that was going to have to be fixed as opposed to the, I would like to have this fixed. Yeah. And now I think we're at that. So yeah, seven months. That's not terrible. No, the the thing uh, is stretch. The thing is too, is like how you get somebody to come in and look at it. And and have them talk about the future because they're only going to get wetter. We're now in like a tropical zone over here in Jersey, oh, yeah. so be like we're basically Florida. <laughs> basically, I I don't want to fix just this. I want this to be fixed. If you know when the big rains keep coming and they yeah. don't stop coming, yeah. Uh, we should also say yeah. There's a lot of serious weather out there, so hopefully everybody is yeah. dealing okay. I had a problem that required me to buy a shop vac. I did not have <laughs> catastrophic damage. Did you vacuum up some water? I did vacuum up some water. I'm going to do some more after we're done here. Okay. Right now, I just have a little space heater pointed at the wet parts. <laughs> uh, dehumidifier down there or no? No dehumidifier. Okay. Uh, it's just, I mean, I have the heat going, so the the, the room is getting warmer at least, yeah. but yeah. Drying out. Yeah. Yeah, man. Water. Water. Water Fucking everywhere. Hate it. Let's get rid of it. Let's no just, more water. That's the problem. Just stop it at the source. That's uh... See, that's what that's that's where the Mars people are right. Yeah. Ain't no water on that damn planet. Oh, but there's ice. And ice is what's ice? Just water yeah, waiting to happen. Yeah, where's it gonna go? Like it can't get you. It's, it's all under the surface, you know. It's like on the on the top. It's all just toxic dust. We can deal with toxic dust. We can fight that. You're saying let's move to Mars. 
Well, I mean, if someone saying. better gets us to Mars than the current uh-huh. crop of people that are trying to, yes. Uh, okay, you're ready to go. What if, no water. What if we just sent all those people to Mars and then we stayed here? You know? <sighs> then, you, you, then, then, Brad, you probably wind up in, um, hey, no spoilers here, but you probably wind up in some kind of Horizon <laughs> Zero Dawn situation, or I should say, impossible, uh, like, you know... Hey, uh, we're back. It was, <laughs> we ran into a lot of problems. It turns out when you guys were putting kind of guardrails in, maybe that was a good idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, uh, can I have my old home back? By old home, I mean the entire planet. No. <laughs> it's just a, sorry, we're not home right now. Earth is not home. You can leave a yeah. message. Uh, we've all gone to Yes, yeah, so it's just like the return message should just be spider webs by no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only message they get back from us. It seems they uh, they've embraced Gwen Stefani as as a leader and uh trying to decode I mean, the message. No, no, that's because she definitely would have gone with them. Oh, she's on the uh no doubt. She's uh she's gone. Well, I mean, let's just be real. That woman is extremely rich. She's, she's definitely going with them. She's a magnate now. Yeah. Look, you can be very very rich and not want to go to Mar- build a spaceship to go to Mars. It's possible. Yeah, but she might be the kind of rich that would. Did she get rich because No Doubt did really well, or was there something else? Like she started some clothing platform. Yeah, I think it's like Juicy, Juicy and stuff like that is where she probably made the real money. And her solo career as well. And her solo career was huge also. And now The Voice is giving her tons of money to be on there every season, so. The Voice? Like that show, The Voice. She's one of the judges on there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I I mean, she was for a long time. I don't know if she still is because I don't fucking watch that show, but. Juicy is her brand? Yeah. Good on her. Celebrities starting brands. That's a weird thing, man. Yeah. I don't know. Beats still celebrities big? are brands. Yeah, that's right. Is Beats still big? I mean, With the headphones. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't hear about them since we moved out of that office in San Francisco. I don't hear about I, them. I want to say Beats has never been a favorite of like hardcore audiophiles, but for people who just want like good, expensive headphones, they're good. That's what people tend to lean to, or at least they they were leaning toward it for a while. I don't know what the current thing is. Mm. Yeah, Beats was huge. Yeah. Was huge. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know about now, but like I saw Beats all over the bus for years and years. And yes. Then, and then Dr. Dre made a lot of money when they yes. sold. An astronomical <laughs> amount of money. Oh, a lot. He, he, he would doesn't Dr. own it anymore. Would, would Dr. Dre go? No, they sold to Apple years ah. ago. Would Dr. Dre go to Mars? Dr. Dre might be smart enough th- yeah. to not go to Mars. I, th- I think I think Dre is real enough to rid- to not yeah. stumble into that. I don't know if maybe Gwen Stefani is not associated with Juicy Couture. She I had some clothing thing she was doing at one point. I, I don't remember what it was. I might have been wrong about that. I'm just going to check myself here. Okay, fair enough. Let's just keep talking about extremely rich people for the rest of this podcast. Sure. Would uh, the Dr. Dre is going to Mars? Is uh, who else? is Dre going to Mars? You just said Dre. Is, aren't there other Dre's? You mean the, the Ed Lover and Dr. Dre? Yeah. <laughs> Those guys are definitely not <laughs> the, going to Mars. The other <laughs> Dr. Dre. <laughs> Wait, is Ed Lover going to Mars? I mean, unless MTV Spring Break is happening on Mars, I don't think Ed Lover and Dr. Dre are going to Mars. Does, what it, a- does anyone who listens to this podcast even remember Ed Lover and Dr. Dre? I mean, I guess maybe I this mean, podcast, do, but-, but come on. <laughs> Wait, are you saying my references are not timely and hip? I'm just saying I, I watched a lot of Yo! MTV raps. Uh-huh. I, I just I was just telling you guys yesterday there's a major Twitch channel whose like channel logo treatment is styled after the Yo! MTV raps logo. That's right. It's a great fucking logo. I love it. Uh, I believe uh, somewhere registered is Yo! Giant Bomb uh, uh, on on Twitter somewhere because that's what I was going to use for a uh, feedback Twitter channel that's during one show was you can you can tweet uh, Yo! Giant Bomb uh, to, to message us. I don't, uh, I don't know why this reminds me of the, but I just I did just dig these out like a week ago. I apparently okay. had a pack of Yo! MTV Raps cards, which I have put on this wall oh. behind me, and like here's oh, one yeah, of you're them, which them is the, yep. uh, the Heavy D and the Boys one. Uh-huh, there it is. Is. There's the Yo MTV rap logo. There's also a Flava Flav one. Uh, I think the other one is De La Soul. Collect them all. Yeah, those are the ones I have. I don't know where the hell those came from, but I have them. I assume we're speaking directly to our audience now. That's uh, if you didn't know it. That's uh, we're, I mean, if you're not down with Heavy D and the Boys, you're not down with the Next Liner podcast. Uh, catch it on Mars any day. Uh, we are here. We're going to be talking about some video games. Oh, you know, like we're kind of catching up, and we're, there's and- not. Let's be real. 
we're in the lull right now. We're in that January lull before stuff really starts popping. Yeah, and we've been kind of talking this week about, uh, you know, focusing on the podcast or, or focusing the podcast, I should say. That's probably better. So I believe we're going to try and um, per where we kind of initially started, maybe having a segment where we're all focusing on one thing for the for a period of time so yeah. that where it's doesn't like, mean we're not going to play other games but like yeah. we want to have some some more focus on us playing the same games yeah which is what we've done before it's just yeah. like, it gets hard and you get side side uh side Relayed. card no side side tracked side, side there you go yeah oh, these are smarter people than i am you get sidetracked but when all the releases start slamming into yeah. you on the side but i think we're going to try it again um next week we'll be talking probably about prince of persia uh, the Lost Crown is that the, the new crown? one? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can't. I've been uh, digging into it a bit. Can't talk about it yet, but we can tomorrow. But we can tomorrow. So we're gonna probably have some of it streaming, uh, and then tomorrow. we'll talk about it on the podcast next week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can't even say whether I like it or not. Nope, illegal. That's it. Uh, let's get into games we can talk about. Uh, I played uh, some more Sea of Stars. I've been continuing with that game. Let me tell you about Sea of Stars and the Moonerang. Okay, tell me about the Moonerang. I, Mooner, don't, yeah. you, look, look, you can talk about the Moonerang all you want. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I'm I'm a little scandalized that you didn't mention last week the Fleshmancer. The Fleshmancer is doing bad business around the uh, the, the islands I would, here. I would think you would lead with that. I feel like I feel like I should have been warned that there was a Fleshmancer involved in here. But talk about your Moonerang. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I um, the Fleshmancer is a menace, and uh, we haven't de- uh, dealt directly with the Fleshmancer. Though I feel like I am dealing with some of the minions of the Fleshmancer. Uh, the Moonerang is a move whereby you launch your your moonerang and you can then time the hits so that you can keep that combo going so it's like an active thing like you're bouncing back uh 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 attacks from ganon style you know like you know, hey hit the sword back i think my issue is some of these things can go on a long time and some of the attacks and sequences can be very long to get what the result you want and it's making me just choose different attacks because i don't want to sit there and do the long attack you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and that's kind of a bummer i feel like and they maybe give you relics to mitigate some of that but i feel like i'm making choices that are not the best choices because of time and not because it's the best choice right uh but moonerang that's a fun thing to say it is a fun word fleshmancer also (laughs) Fun, if also creating a way worse mental picture. How how does one man's flesh? I'm you know, thinking in a very Cenobite kind of way. Okay, okay, you like can, a fl- like a like a flaying wizard, like somebody who's just like uh, you, they do their spell and your skin just peels off. They have man's yeah, flesh. Yeah, they just yell kame kame ha and your skin yeah. goes flying off. That's gross. Okay, yeah, yeah I could see it. Uh, I still it's like, am really. It's like, those, it's like those Magnavox TV ads where the guy's sitting in front of the TV and then, but actually their skin just flies off. Yes, it's, it's in the, like the inside, like the Invisible Man style yeah. toy, like just skin and, and mucus. Again, another great reference. All yeah. the kids had that it's Invisible all I got. Man. It's, it's all like, I have, man. It's yeah. like that. It's like that fog that turns your skin inside out. Yes, I understand that, that reference. That's see, the Simpsons. I got it. Uh-huh. Uh huh. We're full of them around here. <laughs> Is that one from the 90s, too? Yes. Yeah, yeah good, good. Like Just make no, sure nothing post-2000. No, no absolutely late, not. No, no later than, like, 95. Uh, that game is still a lot of fun. I'm still playing uh, it to try to see where things go. I love the vibes in that game. I think uh, I, I really love the character Garl. Um, uh, I'm at the part now, of, if folks are paying attention, where I've got a fourth party member um, my first new party member in the party. I was, I, you know, was kind of waiting to see how they did it. It's interesting. This party member is pretty kick-ass, so I'm pretty happy. We'll see how things move forward. You know, uh, let's let's just talk a little JRPG here for a second. Okay. Yes, I was because I was waiting to say Garl. Garl is really a Super Nintendo sixteen uh-huh. bit RPG ass name for a character. Got, got but, your four letters. Just got to fit them in there. Uh, but, so, but then again, like Marl from Chrono Trigger, it's like right there. Uh huh. Uh-huh. I've I fired that game up very briefly just to take a quick look at it and mostly a look and feel. You know, obviously you're not going to like get a true sense of that type of RPG in the first hour, uh, but like pretty strong Chrono Trigger vibes overall. I think from the soundtrack and the, the pixel art. Yeah, 
and 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 the way the, the the battles unfold, you know, where the enemies are like on the screen, and then they kind of take their places when the f- combat starts. Mm-hmm. And running around the map, uh, yeah. you know, there's you can uh, you can attack enemies to get a jump on them, in, or it takes yes. get some damage in. Yeah, it's you know? it's like way more Chrono Trigger than uh, Final Fantasy. But also, I, I didn't play a lot of non SquareSoft games on the Super Nintendo, so I don't know if there's like other. I think you played a couple like Seventh Saga, right, and stuff like yeah. that. So like, I, I don't know. I don't know if there are other touchstones they're working off of there that are not SquareSoft. So the, the one that um the one that you probably can speak to more because my memory on it's terrible. It's like what what about Secret of Mana? Like, are, what what are you feeling in terms of vibes there? Because there like, is a lot of traversing the environment in this. Yeah, game. like a, yeah, sure. Like some of the, some of the environmental stuff kind of looks similar. I mean, the big thing there is that the combat was real time, more Zelda like in Secret of Mana. So. Uh, the combat's pretty different, but but like environment design and stuff, yeah, I can see it. All right, big. All right, I'm gonna pause this for a second. Ready, mm-hmm. Alex? Yeah. What it? What is the? What is the uh, um, currency you use to spend magic? What's it called? Secret of mana. Okay, Brad. I always said mana. I'm sorry. I'm sure I just probably mana? wrong. But is this I like guess. a manga manga thing? I don't know. I don't know. It's one of the. I mean, that one's manga. Like that. That that's I just know. Japanese. Mana, mana, but but then again, maybe I don't know. I don't know what the etymology of that word is. Mana so from heaven, mana you. from heaven. It's is mana, it? mana. It's not <laughs> mana, mana. Is it Greek? I I would bet it's Latin or Greek. Mana sounds like it's, it's vaguely European. <laughs> um. Anyway, secret of manana, secret mm-hmm. of manga. Uh. Sea of Stars is very good. I'm really enjoying it. Even if the moon rank takes forever, uh, I'm going to keep doing it, I guess. I guess. I'm terrible at timing the uh, parries. Um, I'm just bad at it. Uh, I like that they give you relics. I like the story in it so far. My flesh has not been manced. It's quite That's all right. That's good. You want to keep I'll, it that way, I think. I'll hold on to it. Uh, I, I'm i curious to see where this game goes in terms of... I've heard there are multiple endings, or at least uh, a, a real ending or a true ending. Mm-hmm. Oh, what I was going to say is JRPGs. Let's talk about it for a sec. Brad, mm-hmm. you played a lot of JRPGs in your mm-hmm. past. No. Do you buy weapons from the vendor ever? Never. Ever? Never. Ne- <laughs> Never. 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 You get your weapons from a chest or from defeating an enemy. You never buy them from a vendor. Never. <laughs> okay, that's pretty definitive. I mean, I mean, you know, unless yes, you know, like maybe. maybe okay, that's it, not never it's, then. It's almost, it's almost, almost never worth it. Like, like generally, it's just <laughs> trash. Like, generally, it's just like the uh-huh. stuff. The stuff from the vendor is. N- you're always going to find better stuff in treasure chests. Like, it's the stuff from the the vendor is generic. You know, like all the named weapons that are actually good are out there in the game. So I am finding in this game. I'm buying weapons from the vendor anytime I see them. I mean, that that's cool, actually. Like, that's, you know, like, you can design around that in a way that's actually, like, you know, it kind of forces you to engage with the economy more, right? Cause, totally. Like, like, I I am trying to keep my money. I don't have 99999 gill. I am trying to keep my money, my income going. Get I don't know if I'm doing... Yeah, my dollar's up. I don't know if I'm doing it right, but like when I see those weapons, I'm like, you know, that's a, a plus four to attack. That's, that's respectable. You know I'll what's doing it, it right? Doing what you want. Doing you want to buy a weapon? Buy a yeah, weapon. Who gives yeah, a shit? Who's going to judge you? You got the money. Do what you feel. Okay. Here's what you don't buy. Do you buy potions? Uh, if necessary. I've bought potions. <laughs> in a <laughs> like, That doesn't feel that far afield of like reasonable. No. I, mean, I, I actually am kidding. Look, if like, you're not running around with 99 potions in your belt, you're yeah. doing it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be clear, I'm the person who would finish those games with like like I basically every high potion or X potion that I yeah. picked up throughout the game still in my inventory by the a time billion I finished ethers. Uh huh. Ethers, ethers. Come on, ether. let's get ether. Ether. It's gotta be ether, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, softs. A million softs. Uh, mm-hmm. what's the what's what's the one like eye drops? Right. Yeah. Softs. Eye drops. Eye drops. For, for blind. Yeah. For blind. Uh, basilisk something or whatever's gonna. T- what's the is a soft the thing that stops you stops you from being petrified? Yeah, I or cure, cure stone or whatever. Uh, they still have those in Final Fantasy games. I don't know. Okay, they don't. They don't really have item menus anymore. Yeah, I guess. Uh, what? Well, no, you could, they do even in the remake. They do. Yeah, right? I mean, you, yeah, you can like, throw a soft at somebody. Sixteen technically, like, kind of has items, kind of. Yeah, but it's basically Devil May Cry. Uh, Alex, you you were never a big JRPG person, right? 
No, I mean, like, I I rented and played, like, OG Dragon Quest stuff mm. and, like, a little bit of very early Final Fantasy, but it was just never really my speed. I did play a lot of Chrono Cross for some reason. Okay. I think it might have been influenced by the GameSpot 10 uh, <laughs> that said, ah, well, I'll give this a shot. And while I did not finish it, I sure did like that soundtrack a lot. Yes, the soundtrack's great. I never yeah. played a ton of that game. I was I was one of the people who rejected it in a fit of peak. Understandable. Because, because it was not like actually a direct Chrono Trigger sequel, mm. uh, which may not have been fair at the time. It seemed like a good game. I I just it's not my wheelhouse, so I kind of ran into the same problem I always run into with JRPGs, is that at a certain point, when do you have to start grinding? I don't want to do it anymore. Look, you say you don't play a lot of, or did not play a lot of JRPGs, but you have played pretty much every Yakuza game, which is not to too... beat 'em ups. Like They're, like a dude like a dragon is a full on Japanese mm, role yes, game. <laughs> that one is and that's, and that's what right. I loved about it. I loved that game. And and it was largely for that reason among others. I think their combat system probably needed some tweaking, and I'm curious to see what they do with it in the new one. But like, I but the summons in that game were fucking fantastic. Like yeah. that stuff was amazing. Yeah, I'm 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 pretty excited about the new one. Yeah, They're JRPGs and always have been. They've just embraced their true form. The quest systems and the design of some of the way they build the game out absolutely is and the taking items. inspiration. And the items that stuff is all taking inspiration from JRPGs, a hundred percent. But at their core, uh-huh. up until like a dragon, uh-huh. those were beat 'em ups. <laughs> Yeah, with JRPG <laughs> trappings. Brad, quickly here, your favorite JRPG you can remember ever, ever. playing. Now. Ever? Yeah, ever playing. I mean, uh, look, it's going to be one of those early Final Fantasies, right? Still got to be Final Fantasy VI. Six? Is that yeah. the, that's the whale? No, that's four. That's four, okay. Six, six is, uh... Six Kefka? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Six, six is the gigantic ensemble cast. Six is the, they, they actually succeed in destroying the world, and that's only halfway through the game. Six six is the, like, ahead of its time, like, the second half of the game is you, like, picking up the pieces, roaming the world, looking for your party members mm-hmm. in kind of a nonlinear, whatever order you want kind of fashion. Uh-huh. And then, like, you can just go beat the game whenever you feel like it, more or less. Like, the, the game structure was, like, way ahead of its time. I don't think I ever realized that playing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's 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 rad. It's, Which one gets you the most vehicles? Is it six or four? Which one gets you the the drill on oh, your airship? So four's got the airship with the drill on it, which is an all timer. <laughs> That's like, pretty good. Four four has both the airship with a drill and the big whale. Yeah. Okay. It's look, you're pretty gonna, tough to beat. Uh, okay. Four and six best RPGs, JRPGs. Yes, of all yes, time. Yeah. I've heard Chron- six from a number of people mm-hmm. over the years. So Chron- Chrono Trigger also up there. Yeah. Chrono Trigger, I don't know if I ever finished it, but, you know, I watched a lot of the endurance run stuff that uh, Patrick and uh, Ryan did that time. I must have finished it. Look, my brother's got a Chrono Trigger tattoo on his arm. Mm-hmm. It must have been, uh, 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 that game must have been finished in, this, in, my ha- in the Caravilla household at some point. Not a lot of Dragon Quest I'm hearing. I was not a Dragon Quest kid. I, I, right. I, I mean, Dragon Quest was the first one I played, I think. Dragon Warrior, I should say, at the time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I th- yeah, I think that was the first JRPG I ever saw. But I thought it was weird that you can see the enemies on the map, uh, like a mm-hmm. little little slot, a little like uh, uh, it was like a little silhouette right of the monster moving on the map, and then the yeah, you yeah, could yeah. touch it. Yeah, I, I, I you know, which is weird because look, I like Dragon Ball Z. I like I like uh, I like some Dragon Ball, I like the art, but I just never got into it. Um, uh, I was a Final Fantasy kid. Fair, uh, yeah. Final Fantasy. We all got our preferences. I get like it. Mystic Quest. Uh, I'm trying to think what it was that got me to play Dragon <laughs> was it, was, Warrior was, Quest. Was it the free copy from Nintendo Power? <laughs> it wasn't a free copy of the game. Okay. No. I rented that game a bunch of times, but I never actually owned it. But okay, because at some point, if you resubscribe to Nintendo Power, they just started sending free copies of that game in the mail. Man, I must have fucked up on that one. <laughs> I, but but I, I do got- remember seeing it in Nintendo Power, and I think seeing whatever spread they had for that game got me to be like, I should try this out. I've still got it in the shrink. I never opened it. Really? I still got yeah, because I already already played it at my friend's house a bunch. It was like way after it came out, because I'm sure they probably had more copies than they knew what to do with. Right. That's amazing. They weren't selling. So somewhere in the basement of my parents' house is a factory sealed copy of Oh, you gotta dig that out, man. Dragon Warrior for the NES. I think it's maybe not worth like a ton a ton just because they sent so many mm. out. Uh I did find a I found a factory sealed copy of Castlevania Bloodlines down there. Ooh. Uh last week. Which one is that? It's the Genesis one. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
which seems we like it's probably one. yeah we played them all seems, seems like that one's worth probably a good few hundred dollars oh yeah maybe i should get it graded it's in like pristine like the box hasn't even been up or anything okay it it's, sounds it's, like you're you're secretly hoarding a uh, quite a collection there it's, 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 i i also found a factory sealed intel celeron 300a how the hell did you wind up with I have that no idea how I think I might have bought a second one for a friend or something or like as a spare or if it's like there was something going on where somebody else was. I, this was 25 years ago. <laughs> what yeah, I was going to say, that's anyway, like pre you being in some kind of position to just be getting seller. Oh, yeah. Shows. No, no. I definitely paid for that. Yeah. I have no idea why. I, I I feel like I remember something about like they were hard. They were they were. I mean, that was the the king of overclocking CPUs of all time. Like there was mm-hmm. a run on those things. And I, I'm guessing I might have like bought another one for a friend. Just to make sure they would have one and then ended up not using it or something like that. Is that that's not one of anyway. those ones where you could like take a pencil to it. <laughs> like, oh, that was the Duron. That was the AMD okay. Duron with the pencil trick. Oh, uh, back in I, the day when you'd yep. buy a CPU yep. and taking a pencil to it. Yep. Taking pencils to your it's CPUs, just... watching Yo MTV raps, <laughs> playing your JRPGs. That was the life, man. Yep. Yep. What have we become as a society, really? Dude, that, yeah. thing, that thing was a guaranteed 50% overclock out of the box. <laughs> Did you check and make sure you did the pencil thing right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I did not. I did not. Can you even do the Ed Lover dance in Fortnite? Uh, I hope not. I hope Ed Lover's getting uh, getting paid to do an Ed I, Lover dance in Fortnite. I would also like for Ed Lover yeah. to get paid. Somebody pay somebody pay Ed Lover. Ed Lover's still kicking around? If I think so. Okay, good. I don't know if Dr. Dre is still with us, but I, I'm pretty sure Ed Lover is still alive. Since we're talking about it, I also found a stack of uh, copies of the high school newspaper I worked on in high school. Okay. Where I, you mentioned that like off yes. camera when you were still out there. Where I apparently was a technology writer that I really don't remember at all. Uh-huh. I reviewed MechWarrior 2. Okay. I reviewed the Nintendo 64. Oh, you mentioned that. You did mention that. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. No score, right? No. I started okay. to take a picture of some of those articles, and then I actually read some of them, and nope. <laughs> Those I mean, will you're never a teenager, s- for God's those, sake. Those will never see the light of day. Yeah. You, were an, you, went, you were an English major in college? Mm-hmm. Okay, look. Bona fides is mm-hmm. what they say. Is is what they say. I don't know what I, you don't want to I, know what I say. In a way, it would almost be weirder if you just vividly remembered writing all that stuff for a school <laughs> newspaper. Like I was in yearbook class one year for school, and I could not tell you a single piece of actual work I did on that yearbook. I just know I did something. You think Jur- uh, journalism class ruled because the thing I remember about it is that we did nothing in there until like the last minute before every issue and then like yeah. scrambled, scrambled I mean, to get the newspaper together. It's like and, real news. I was just going to say from the, the people I've talked to at, at least gaming publications, that always seemed to be the case there, too. Uh, uh, yeah. And the teacher was super cool with like, for example, me bringing my Nintendo 64 into class when nice. we're not on deadline. Look, you're reviewing hey, I reviewed it. it. You're reviewing so, it. Sure. It's work. It's product. Uh, you think, you think years from now, like, uh, not even years from now, I guess, I guess people could tell me now, like, I, I'm sure you guys have them too, like old notes or something that were passed around in school, like mm-hmm. letters from people. Oh yeah. Found you a, th- found a whole box of those. Yeah. Do you, th- you think people have like their chat histories that are like or, some people old do. phones or something yes, like that? Some yeah. people do. That's terrifying. I mean, I've got, <laughs> dude, I've got reams of uh, IM logs and IRC logs sitting right here on this computer. That's bananas, man. I could pull up a conversation probably between me and you right now. I'm sure you I'm sure you could. We've never had one. I'm sure you could. Burn them all. Oh, delete wait. them all. Wait, I forgot what was your aim name. I can't remember. It's probably Mind Cavity. That's what I thought, but nothing's coming up there. It could be Arf the Dog. That's what it is. Yeah. That's the one. Uh-huh. Yes, there's a bunch here. There's there's all there's plenty. Let me go get uh, pigeon or uh, something else loaded up. Uh, what's the one that was the aggregator for all the aim client or the, all the messaging clients that everybody had? Oh, the, well, there was um, trillion, trillion, yeah, trillion, yeah. Yeah. trillion, yeah, yeah. trillion was yes the original aggregator. And my MSN chat or whatever. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. <clears throat> Put my ICQ up. number in there. Yep, yep, yep. Um. Well, while you do that, I'm going to say the word Sea of Stars one more time. So that yeah, I since that's still to, technically part of the segment. <laughs> that's, that's, so I have to put another marker in here. Uh, that game is fun. I'm going to continue playing that in the background. Uh, uh, so it's if always you, he, nice to see the JRPG fans get something they really like and can sink their teeth into. You know, I mean, look, obviously they're still making Final Fantasies and things of that nature, but like, you know, 
lots of indie devs have made attempts at games like this and uh, not necessarily hit the, oh, this is awesome note. Mm. And it feels like a lot of the people I know who like these kinds of games say this one is awesome. Yeah, look, I, these have been, JRPGs are out there. I don't play them anymore, but they, yeah. they, they're the out there. Th- this one seemed to break through. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they, anyway. they, they kind of all take the form of homage at this point, or at least the, like the 16-bit styled ones, right? Right. Mm. Are mostly just people like saying, hey, I loved growing up with these and I wanted to make my own. I can't really speak to it. Like, I, it's really, uh, JRPG to me usually ticks off a box that's like, you ain't got time for this, man. You mm-hmm. just, you you but then there are other things you should be doing. But then you know, look, I'll spend I'll I'll put seventy hours into something like the Tears of the Kingdom, and like that's that's JRPG time, right? That, mm-hmm. That's or like one hundred and ten hours into Baldur's Gate, and that that's a that's a clock of time. Um, so yeah, Sea of Stars, still good. Thirty five dollars, not not a, not that pricey a game. Um, you can go catch it. You find the a- a- I, just, I just dropped a screenshot of a conversation between me and you from oh December 6, 2007 into the Slack. 2007? Uh, Does it say, we got to get out of here? That's no. Okay. No. I feel like at any point in time, there's a conversation between the two of us. <laughs> mm-hmm. We got we to gotta get out of here. Oh, yeah. Um, sorry, you put yeah. it in the Slack? I'll take yeah, a look it's, at it. Yeah, it. It, it was just a random one that I found. I don't know. Oh, look at that. There I, I am. That. That was about like a month and change before I did get out of there. I just it, peeked at it, and there's the words "Army of Two are in it. Uh-huh. Yep. yep. Okay, great. What a time to be alive. It all. It also reminded me that you could format your text and aim. Yes. Yeah. So you could, like, and stuff. Yeah. Could, like, change the font, make it bigger, underline and bold and stuff. So you. We could really goof, have lost so much. You could goof around with the text and in, in a way that was fun and a, a, an avenue for comedy sometimes. <laughs> Um, now it's all emojis. Now you gotta rely on the emojis. We have lost so much. (laughs) We've lost so much. Uh, look, I'm, is instant messenger still a thing? If you, if you have an AOL account, can you message somebody? No, they, they, they officially killed it four-ish years ago, I want to say, like 2019, something like that. If they brought it back, would you, would you, and they said... You could use it, and we, we, we will keep, if you have your email address, we will give you your old handle back. Hmm... I don't Would know. You, no. It wouldn't last is like, the problem. Di- There's so much stuff like Discord that serves the same purpose at this oh, point. Oh, yeah. No, no. It would be like a vintage, weird flip phone style thing, but I might use it. I might try it. All right. That is Sea of Stars. Before we move on here, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. This week's show is brought to you by Hello Fresh. Alex Navarro and Brad Shoemaker. Hello, Fresh. Hello, Hello. Fresh. Hello, Fresh. That's what they always say. That's what I always say to you guys. Hello, mm-hmm. Fresh. Are you allowed to refer to yourself as Fresh? I can. Hello, Other, Fresh yes. Shoemaker. Brad Shoemaker with Hello Fresh. You get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on Hello Fresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. And that's why, Brad Shoemaker, you're my number one. Hello, Fresh Shoemaker. Just call me Fresh. <laughs> What's up, Fresh? Whether your resolution is to save money, eat better, or stress less, which I'll tell you what, that's on my resolution list. Hello Fresh is here to help you do all three. Say hello to your most delicious year yet with fresh ingredients and chef-crafted recipes at a price you'll like delivered right to your door. Each HelloFresh box is packed with farm fresh ingredients and everything arrives pre-portioned right to your doorstep for less hassle and less wasted food. Alex Navarro. Yeah. You've HelloFreshed. I have. They sent me food. They sent me ingredients. I made these Santa Fe pork tacos. They were delicious. They sent me these little egg bites that were like a breakfast thing and they were pretty dang good. Well, it says here, Alex, it says here, they say breakfast is the most important meal of the day, and HelloFresh agrees. In fact, they're giving all subscribers free breakfast for life, which is the thing I I can get into. That means you'll enjoy a totally free breakfast item with every single HelloFresh delivery. How can you get in on this? Well, go to HelloFresh.com slash NextLanderFree. That's NextLanderFree, one word. And use code NEXTLANDERFREE for free breakfast for life. (laughs) One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com 
slash Nextlander free with code Nextlander free. That's HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Thanks, HelloFresh. Uh, what else we got going on here? The finals. We played the finals. Yeah. The finals is the the free to play. It is free to play everywhere, yeah, right? It is yes. free to play. Uh, finals, free to play. It kind of dropped during the game awards, right? Is that correct? Yes. Or, or launched for real. It had been in some kind of beta. Yeah, they ran at least one or two betas, alphas last year. It is uh, in the mold, uh, which seems like a very uh, popular mold, which is a uh, team-based, uh, it's not really extraction shooter, but no. it's kind of... It's, it's, I would, I like the l- way I would lean toward categorizing it as mobility shooter. Sure. Kinda, yeah, yeah, sure. It's, yeah. it's an interesting mashup. I mean, first of all, it's like a, you know, the motif is some kind of future game show mm-hmm. thing. But they're treating it very much of like a, you're jacking into this cyber verse where you are doing these fights. It is not your actual, like we are just throwing people into the meat grinder kind yeah. of thing. You yeah. explode into coins. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's an interesting mashup because like the, the it's realistic guns and aim down sights like a Call of Duty, except that the time to kill is very high. So like you have to really put a bunch of bullets into people to kill them. You know, like you have to really keep your aim on them. A lot yeah. of survivability. Like it's class based, but there's a lot of customization in the classes. So there's like healing and heavy and all that stuff. It's like not quite Overwatchy, but there's like you know abilities in that vein. But then there's also all this destruction where you can just blow holes in the sides of buildings to mm-hmm. make pathways and stuff. With abilities kind of, some abilities focus on that destruction. So you get yeah. this weird verticality. I know that's been a buzzword for a while, but. But I mean, this one has it. Yeah, yeah. you kind of have to think about it. If somebody's right above you and you can shoot the floor out from underneath yes. them, that's like a weird thing. Yeah. And like, you know, tons of mobility because like you, like the grappling hooks, uh, mobile jump pads you can throw down. Yeah. All kinds of other weird abilities, like the goo grenade, the you know, just like pop a giant barricade out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Like it's super dynamic. Like it's yeah. really, you know, stuff changes constantly with the buildings being destroyed and like you know, barricades getting thrown in your face at the last second and stuff. It's kind of awesome. It's it's a li- maybe a little light currently on modes. So there's like a I think it's three v three v three with uh like for for I'm not gonna use their terminology, but for lack of a better term, a vault will pop on the map. You can run to the vault get the money and then you have to deposit the money. So it's uh you know these modes have been done in other games. I think Warzone has similar things where yeah. you, you can kind of you got to cash out, right? And then another vault will open up somewhere and you're doing the same thing and they're 3v3v3 so the three teams are vying to see who can hit what is it 6000 first in that mode or 4000? I can't 000? remember that mode. The other mode is 40,000, I forget in the Yeah, so the other mode is 3v3v3v3, four teams of 3 and you can get money this is definitely more like Warzone. You can get money uh, for killing other players and doing the vault, and then you, if you get killed, somebody can steal the money you have. Right. And then you to bank it, you have to go to a point and bank it again. Modes have been done before. The tone of the game is... Uh, I you mean, know, it's Smash TV ish. Yeah, you know, like it's I game can, showy. Yeah, I can definitely sort of take or leave the aesthetic and the vibe of the whole thing. I here's the thing. They've created something that feels very dynamic to play. The like I, I think the physics stuff is really well done. Like the way the environment can deform around the the nonsense that you are doing in the game, I think is really great. I think that for all that dynamism, a lot of its presentation is kind of flat and not that interesting. Like I think the map design is fine. Like the the verticality of the maps and the the layouts are good. And they change them up a little bit. I think. Yeah. Like some. Uh, oh effects. yeah. There's yeah. That's I, I haven't like gotten my head around that stuff too much. It's like different. Like maps will load in at different times of day and, yeah. and with optional weather stuff going on. And yeah. There's also there's also some modifiers at the end. Yeah. There, well, there's some concept of like yeah like modifiers that trigger throughout the match. Yeah. You know. Alien invasion. Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. Just meteors. like mega bombs are coming in in 30 seconds or, stuff like or the, that everybody explodes when you kill them yeah, yeah. but i think yeah. I, I just think aesthetically like the visuals are just not that interesting they're flashy but they don't really have much to hang their hat on that isn't kind of just feels like it's aping other shooters of this type and i don't like the the commentary stuff like i i, I we all know about the ai thing with that game and sort of the paying actors to use their voices and then using that to generate dialogue dynamically for what your teams are doing on the field. Yeah. It is not noticeably better or more interesting than just having canned lines that play when stuff happens. And I think going to those lengths to try and create something around AI 
and still ending up in what sounds like just as good as some dude yelling toasty when you do a fucking <laughs> cool uppercut uh, is not I, is not it's just not that worthwhile I, to me. I would say toasty's way more memorable like yeah, I, yeah. I think like this, this this the voiceover is is worse than real voiceover yeah, but but yes. only subtly worse like it's totally serviceable and if you didn't know it was ai you probably wouldn't notice so, but so i didn't until you guys mentioned it but the, by that same token i found it completely forgettable and like, one of those it's things extremely that, forgettable as, as, as soon as as soon as you know it's ai and listen to it you can kind of just barely hear the scenes okay. in it yeah so it's but it's it, the it's the barks from the announcer is it yeah. the uh okay yeah yeah yeah, and like, I just they're, they're just, all they're all they're all just they're all just a little bit robotic in the way that like most all AI generated stuff is, and like you know, somebody did at least get paid here. So it's uh, it's based on uh, like voice actors models that they. My, my, they, my yes. understanding is that they paid voice actors who provided their voices and they trained the model on those voices. I think is how it worked, but even then, even then, they're just making I assume a flat rate. I, I yeah, I don't know and, about and the not, financials of it, but the, I know the end product. And again. It sounds like Alex. We were talking before the show. This is some stuff that's in negotiation right now with SAG-AFTRA in, yes, in terms of the how voice the actor stuff, stuff is kind of in a very hot place right now. So yeah, this the stuff is all over. Like this is going to be the year that everybody has to deal with this stuff because like Valve just announced that games with AI generated content are going to be allowed on Steam. So hopefully, which you means know, look, the floodgates are open I'm, now. I'm not a voice actor. Hopefully, they and their union can find a good place for for how they want to get paid for this stuff. I'll just say the product is not memorable in this state. And, you know, not that the finals needs to be the 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 thing to look at here. But if you guys hadn't said anything, I probably wouldn't have noticed. I would have just said the voice is not that memorable. It's like not a not a it's not an exceptional use of anything. Yeah, you know, it's just kind of forgettable. No, it's it's very forgettable, and I just I I feel like of all the things to kind of cut corners on and try and find a way to not have to pay for full like performance, you know, rates. Uh, it just feels like it actually sucks a little of the energy out of the matches because they're just saying stuff, and it never really feels like it's like it doesn't feel like it's yeah. that dynamic. They those announcers could have been characters in the game that yeah. are super fun, uh, that have banter, and you know. Again, I don't really know how they're using it, so I'm talking a little out of turn here, but, uh, you know, getting fun and talented voice actors to come in to add life to those things could, yeah. have, ma- could have taken it to another step. Even up. if it gets repetitive at a certain point, that's fine, because as long as there is an animated actual performance happening there, yeah. I can live with that. I mean, some of our, some of the best games that have announcers are memorable because of the announcers, yeah. right? Like, you know... <laughs> finish him did not come out of nowhere no. right like yeah. uh, it's it might be not be the greatest performance but it's something you remember or uh uh you know cook 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 combo breaker totally and is, i think you know. for for a shooter that feels this fluid and this dynamic to play i kind of wish there was just a little bit more of that dynamism in the yeah. art and and audio well look sometimes voice actor stuff is uh, is also terrible but like yeah i'm not saying it's it's a <laughs> yeah. guaranteed win i'm just saying that i would rather they tried that yeah, I but I I think the loop in the game, I thought going into that stream we did of it that we would get kind of bored of the loop, but it was it was fun. It was it was it was interesting. especially we, as we were we learning better. It. Yeah, yeah. I think the class based stuff seems to work out well. Like it seems like there's a difference between the classes, and it's free. It's a free game, so you are unlocking things within the game which do seem to actually expand the playability of the game quite a bit as you're unlocking them new weapons mm-hmm. and and ultras or whatever supers and and stuff like that so i'm and not sure we saw feel, everything it doesn't feel like the free-to-play stuff is too predatory like it's there obviously like they mm. do want you to buy some of their currencies and things but it did not feel like you are in a hole without having to go out there and buy a bunch of stuff yeah, I yeah. mean, you get, you have to play a little bit to unlock some of the alternate abilities and guns and stuff, yeah. but not that much, you know. Not that much. There's, there's a decent amount of options. Uh, it's it's a lot of gate. cosmetic stuff if you want to pay um, out of pocket. Like, like Gameplay-wise, there, there's a fair amount of stuff to, to use right at the beginning. Look, we won. We're the best at the finals. This this morning, uh, in the bank it mode, the, the 40,000 mode, the 14 one. Mm-hmm. The first place team was at thirty nine thousand dollars for like five minutes. All oh, they no. had to do was deliver a thousand dollars. We were in third, and I came out of a really severe firefight and just picked up all the money and didn't even look at how much I had. Uh huh. We were at seventeen thousand. Again, out of forty. My other two teammates were dead. I just ran for a deposit station, slammed the coins in again without even looking at how much I had on me, and then we won. <laughs> 
Fucking nice. hell yeah. I apparently had at least 23,000 on me. That's out awesome. That, out of that massive firefight, and we went from third place to winning the match without me even realizing I was about to win the match. It was kind of amazing. Oh, that, that sounds rules. fun. Yeah, um, I, look, I think that game is fun. Yeah, um, it is. It's, it's uh, fun. It fun it's to very, play with you guys. It's very breakneck, seat of the pants, you know, with all the, like, the destruction and stuff, and the and the... The mobility lets you pick like new routes or create new routes, you know, like it lets you it lets you go where a route shouldn't be with the jump pads and the grappling hook and then busting down walls and all that stuff. It just feels it feels like it's changing around you constantly in a way that's pretty exciting. Um, That's the finals It's tough, free t- tough to play with randos, I will say. Like, oh, when it, you're not communicating very much is a game you probably should play. With. We did go up against a few teams which seemed like they were playing very a very coordinated game. There's like a support. Uh, system in it for support classes where you could just be healing people and and that i think that's the one we won on right when we did two support yeah and, and yeah, yeah it, and we had one mid yeah yeah starting Look, i'm get, always mid seeing like heavies and they're using shields quite effectively and stuff though like people are yeah. starting to get good at that game also i forgot there's like kind of an emphasis on melee like the the heavy, the heavy has, that has that sledgehammer sledgehammer but i also saw a fair number of mediums using swords as oh, well i guess i never and, unlocked that yeah. and, and the light has a knife like quite a few people that i saw playing it this morning were running around with melee weapons um yeah i, I enjoyed my time with them. maybe we'll go back to it at some point um and and win again and i hope uh i hope the the voice actors win as well and get, get what yep. they want i honestly i'm not exactly sure i haven't been keeping up with with those negotiations but Pay him a fair wage. Pay him what they're worth. It uh, seems like things are in a complicated place right now. And again, not as not an expert on how these negotiations go, but it feels like some of the stuff that is starting to float up is uh, there's there's some contention around it. Okay. Well, I hope they're I hope that their union and they and the base are in line to yeah. to as a unified front. Um, I, I, I should I should mention real quick since I talked about the Valve stuff. Uh, yeah. It seems like they are requiring developers to disclose that their game has AI generated content. Oh, are you um, mentioning right? They had a disclosure, or they had, they had a. I don't know if you talked about it on this podcast, but, but you mentioned it a, a bit ago. You had to have ownership of all your stuff, right? That was the thing they used to have on there, and then they changed that, Brad. I am not sure what the change was exactly. This this may have just been their further detailing the policy. I thought I okay. thought previously you couldn't have games with AI generated content at all. I could be wrong, but they are allowing games now with AI content on the service but again you have to you have to say that it has it and apparently uh, if it apparently if it's the type of thing that generates the content at runtime you also have to kind of explain what your safety measures are in place for it to not generate like extremely not good content mm-hmm. Weird. so um, it, is that one of those things that'll be listed on the side of like probably, has probably. co-op and yeah and i'm support? yeah and i'm i'm sure I'm sure Valve wants to flag all of these games appropriately just to, so they have those global controls in case anything changes. If they just mm-hmm. need to like pull everything all at once for whatever reason mm-hmm. or something like knowing, knowing every game on the service that has this stuff and being able to like hit a button to like shut it all down if they need to probably is valuable. Shut them all down. There was just another, uh, I saw the wizards of the coast uh, just had another thing kerfluffle with, um, it's you know look I I think it's really hard out there when they have contractors and because they had said we're not gonna we're we are making it a rule for our contractors no AI generated art and then the people saw some artwork that went up for Magic the Gathering and I was like that definitely looks AI generated and Wizards was like it's not we 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 made sure it's not and then they had to walk that back later and be like okay turns out the person did it used. Uh, Photoshop's AI tools that are in it to generate something or other I think that's what they were saying. It's going to be a, it's Wacom had the same thing happen. Oh yeah. Of all the fucking companies to have that happen. Key art or something. I, some ad, something they did ended up with AI generated assets in it. And they did the exact same routine as far as I can tell of denying it and then blaming a third party. And it's just like, is that the playbook now? Hope no one notices. And if they do say it's someone else's fault. Well, look, I, like a lot of these people are hiring contract people who they have to then trust to not do it. And these tools are really integrated now. And like in Photoshop, they're just baked in there. Yeah. I'm not giving them a pass. I'm just saying this stuff is going to be, it, I, I think it's tough. It's I'm messy. Not, it's, but it's, I'm just saying this messy. has happened like three times in the last week, which yeah, is yeah. wild. It's it's messy. Like, I don't think it's going away. I just, again, my stance is hopefully there are protections for the people who need the protections in place for this stuff. Wild West, man. I'm yeah. not even here. This is my There's no AI goddamn voice. law anymore. 
No, let's go back. Let's get Ed Lover back. Yep. He'll do the Ed Lover dance. That that can't can't AI generate that. <laughs> they tried it. They tried. Wouldn't work. Um, Alex Navarro. Some things never change. Ed Lover, Yo MTV Raps, and Vampire Survivors. Yeah, I played a bunch of that. Uh, what is it? Emergency meeting. The Among Us DLC. So how how is that? It's substantial. Is what I will say. It is one new map, but uh, it's a big one, and it's one of the few that actually kind of changes up the gameplay a little bit, because every X number of minutes, you have to go find a red button to hit, uh, otherwise seismic activity will happen, and when you do that, they give you a big honking chest full of stuff every time you hit the button. Um, And then also on that map, there are a bunch of little guys that are your, like, bonus uh, mm-hmm. you know, like the way, you know how they have weapons and they have bonus items, which are like the stat boosts and things like that. So the bunch of little guys are the guys you use to upgrade the weapons of the new characters, which is like seven or eight different characters modeled after the Among Us folk. Okay. Are they like giant? Do they just become huge? No, they're like normal size compared to all the other characters. You know, okay. it's just that like there's the shapeshifter, there's the scientist, there's the engineer, all all that stuff, and they all have a weapon that's sort of attached. To that like one is literally just a giant card slide that just appears on screen and then just whacks everything that is in front of you. There's another one that opens uh, vents across the floor that enemies can fall into. And then the upgrade of that is literally just a port opening on one side or the other of the of the map and sucking all the enemies out into space. Okay. So it's a lot of that. It's pretty good. Like, <laughs> I mean, look, it, I, there's no real purity when it comes to vampire survivors. It's fucking do whatever. I'm, I'm down for whatever. <laughs> so I, I have no problem with putting Among Us characters in this game. It's just, it's wild that they put like seven or eight new ones as a result of that. Is, there's no um there's no mechanic baked into it where somebody is a hidden something or other right like it's it's mostly there's no like the you know among us true mechanic of there's this person's a traitor it's just mostly fighting these people with the kind of uh trap mechanics in it i i have not found anything that is traitor like anywhere okay. in it but i will say the first character the one that is default unlocked uh is the one that has the megaphone Okay. Uh, that calls the emergency meeting, and the de- like. The upgrade of that weapon is that once you get it, uh, every minute or so, it will uh, find it will determine one enemy type that is on the map as the imposter, and then erase all of them. Huh. Okay. Oh, That's forever cool. or just well, no, for, just for that. Clears until, the screen. Uh, it just clears the screen of all of them for, and for the next minute or so. For a minute, it's pretty. Well, pretty I'm intense. saying they're gone, and then in a minute later, they will do it again with a different enemy type. Oh, got it. Because yeah. isn't one of the upgrades like a screen clearing thing every on a timer? Yeah. What is that? Which one? That's is that the, the pe- that's the pentagram. The pentagram, one. right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, okay. I don't like that one very much. No, it's I never a, use the pentagram. Uh, it's a slow timer. I feel it gets like. you out of the. It also it has a chance to clear all the gems. Yeah. Which yes. Why. That's part. That's, that's part right. of why. Yeah. Yes. So you like it? I like it. I mean, look, I, I I'm never going to complain about Vampire Steel Survivor's DLC because it's always like two dollars and fifty cents. Yeah, I was just looking at it on the Xbox Store, thinking like I should. I don't even know if I'll ever play it, but I might as well just get that for two fifty. Like I got my two dollars and fifty cents worth, like probably in the first hour, and I have I have unlocked all the characters, and that took several hours. So let me tell you, I got my money's worth. Are you working back up to one hundred percent? I I have two weapon evolutions I have to go find, and otherwise I'll be back at one hundred percent. That's amazing. Never, I'm never an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's not the only thing I've been playing, all right? I did play... I I also got back on my Hitman bullshit, thanks to that end of December stream we did. Good for you. Look, Hitman's still a great game. I want to unlock that drum set in my basement. In the Hitman. In the Hitman. Yeah, yeah. I have what a drum you, set in my basement <laughs> yeah, I was in real say, life. Is it just a master, or it's the uh, points in the yeah, freelancer it's just mode? leveling up. It's that thing where you level up, and then you get yeah. a new thing unlocked in your room. By the way, when we were playing that, and I unlocked that thing in the shed, I didn't realize I can now go in my shed. Oh, and you go there? in there, yeah. and Diana has created a brewing kit for you in there that you have to repair initially. But then you go find mushrooms around your property, and then you filter them in there, and you can make poison vials and take them on the mission. And take them you. on the mission. Huh. Okay, that's neat. That's- yeah, that probably makes fulfilling some of those requests easier. Yeah, totally. So now I only have like 30 levels left and I can get my drum set. 
it's is it take really that far in? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm like I'm at like level thirty four yeah. in that mode, and I think I have to be sixty something to get that drum set. Have you gotten uh, a good run? Like, are you deep in a thing now? The furthest I've gotten since I got back into it was deep into a third tier run. Okay, and there are five. There's four. Four. Okay, that's pretty. That's pretty high. Yeah. Are you in the middle of one now? No, I just I bombed out the last okay. one. So I here's the thing: if I bomb it, if I fuck up at all in the first run, I just start over. Okay. Any other one, I keep going until I can't go anymore. Right, right. You get your your second. Yeah, because you never have enough money to lose. Because like, they take half your money when you restart a run. Yeah, yeah. But if you never ha- like after a first run, you never have enough money for it to matter. Brad, do we? Is there a date on that James Bond thing? No, no, no definitely no, no, not. No. Okay, they haven't even That's- shown that thing yet. No. Oh. Nope. Did- is it? Do we know what Bond it is? Uh, they're still just calling it Project 007, I believe. Okay. So, I here's my theory. Yeah, it's a British guy. What? Probably a safe bet. How about a British gal? I mean, that would be welcome. Is it exciting? They recast, different, but they I don't recast, think they're going to do that. <laughs> have they recast? I just assumed it would be tied no, to whatever. They're, they're, recast no, the no, they're they're, they're super in between bonds right now. Okay. I think the last time they were asked about it, they said, we're really thinking about what we want the future of Bond to be, which says to me they have no fucking idea what they want Bond it, to be at this point. Mm. Is it going to be a white British man with dark hair? Or no. blonde hair? Well, now, yes, now blonde is possible, yeah. I suppose. Daniel Craig really busted the wall open on <laughs> yeah. what's possible for James Bond. Uh, yeah. This this just says, Pro- Project 007 working title is a brand new James Bond video game featuring a wholly original Bond story, so... Oh, wholly original, okay. It, it could it could just be their own design. Yeah. I, we assume you would be playing as Bond. And not an AI-generated Bond. I would bond, think yes. so. <laughs> I, I was going to say, like, so. not some kind of, like, side thing where you're, like, a different double O or, you know. Yeah. I mean, li- okay, yeah. All right. I'm curious to see what happens with that. Okay. Quick before we move on to our next segment here. Chances of that game never coming out? The Bond game? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not that high. Not that high? Yeah. Okay. A, a, a license of that magnitude, I'm pretty sure they're going to try to make sure it gets out the door. Well, okay. Especially considering IO has basically put the majority of their resources into this yeah. thing now. So yeah. my follow up question, maybe I said one question too soon. Chances of IO getting bought before that thing comes out? Uh, I mean, considering they just got loose of, uh-huh. of Square Enix, uh-huh. I'm guessing they're probably pretty gun shy about a corporate parent again anytime I f- soon. I feel like something pretty catastrophic would have to happen. And granted, I am not saying that that isn't possible in the current mm. landscape of video games by any stretch, but I feel like they would not make that move unless they absolutely had to. Microsoft buys IO 2025. Hmm. That uh, feels hmm. like one Sony might go Sony? after if they Maybe. were looking for someone. Hmm. I feel like that Bungie news put probably developers on their heel- heels a bit by being yeah. like, maybe we th- we talked to Microsoft before we talked to Sony. Well, I mean, not look, that they're the only two people out there, but no, I mean, like it, the one thing Microsoft has going for it, yes, is that they have not done a ton of mass layoffs of the studios they have bought so far. But I mean, is that is that bulwark going to hold forever? I don't yeah. know. Sony just did it really fast in a way that was unexpected. Yeah, again, yeah, we're probably talking out of our ass here too because who I don't know anybody don't know buying anybody. What, I don't know anybody what the by numbers are on now. this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I hope Hitman did okay for them, but I feel like Hitman's one of those things I love that didn't do super well. You know, like it's one of I those. I think World of Assassination did all right, and okay. I think that it has a pretty good ongoing player base still. But I mean, I don't know how much of that is actually filtering into more money. Yeah, I bet yeah. I bet it was an extremely long tail on that. Yeah, game. slow okay. burn. I hope they did really well. Uh, uh, I, I don't think like sales wise, it set the world on fire or anything, but I think it probably was like pretty steady and reliable for them. Yeah. And they sold some packs guess. and DLC. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also I, we've talked about this before, like the kind of, and I, you know, this is just my perception of playing the games. I don't know anything behind the scenes, but it looked like the reduction in budget was fairly apparent over time, or at least the cinematics and that, that sort of thing. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like you could really see, how they had scaled back on certain production values and quality uh, from game to game. But then again, they added that whole freelancer mode uh, yes. as, uh, kind of on top for free. And really uh, good. Again, that's one of, yeah. one of the best things about that game now. And I wonder if that World of Assassination package 
saw a big uptick in people who hadn't bought one and two scooping those up and pulling those into the platform for, for those maps. You know me, like, I'm always a big fan of the platform model. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's, just, it's like, it's like the best love letter any developer ever wrote for their own game. You know, <laughs> the way they, the way they did that. Oh, well, no, the, 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 the whole package, the platform. Uh, yeah. I mean, like, like to take that much work over that many years and just kind of house it all in one thing. Yeah. It's just so awesome. Ah, <sighs> Jackbox, make a platform. Yeah. Just, just roll them all up into one thing. Uh, all right. That's going to do it for the games. We're going to, unless you guys have anything else to talk about nope. games wise. That's what I got. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back with the news. <laughs> all right. We are back. It's time for the news. Brad Shoemaker, you've gone through, pick some news. From this last week here, got mm-hmm. a lot of Xbox news going on. You want to kick it off with exclusives maybe not being so exclusivo anymore? Yeah, that's that's the word going around. Everybody from Nate the Hate uh-huh. uh, to Giant Bomb's Jeff Grubb to Steven Totillo, uh-huh. f- formerly of Kotaku and Axios. He's actually, he's actually running his own newsletter now. Oh, no kidding. I thought he was still yes. at Axios. Okay. No, he has, he, has, he has gone independent. Anyway... A lot of people are reporting that Microsoft is looking at starting to bring some of its first party games to other platforms. Mm. Uh, and it's, it's sounding like the most likely one of those right now is Sea of Thieves to PlayStation. Interesting. So just roll that one around it. in your head for a second. I am. So, uh, you know, that's a game that needs player bases, right? And like, well, or it doesn't need them, I guess, but you know, it's an online game that could benefit from more players, right? Sure. Makes sense. Now, also, look, al- also made by Microsoft first party studio Rare. Yeah, so I guess the thing the here, I, I, would, I would, um, I would say Brad is like, look, the Minecraft's been on every platform before. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, I mean, I think Minecraft is. I, I look at Minecraft as its own thing. My mm-hmm. Minecraft is its own industry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically, it's its own console. <clears throat> but there, there's, there's rarely a thing that has started inside of Microsoft that has made its way out. They have yeah. honored cross-platform commitments from studios they have gobbled up, and there are plenty. Yes. yes. Uh, so this that's what makes this a bit more new- unique, right? Yes, for sure. I mean, yeah. yeah, like, what was it? was, like, a lot of the Bethesda stuff, like uh, Ghostwire Tokyo and something else. Uh, Deathloop, um, right. Yeah, Deathloop. Deathloop. Deathloop was a PS5 exclusive even after uh, – they had taken uh, possession of Bethesda. Um, I forgot Psychonauts 2, but they had promised that multi-platform on Fig. Mm-hmm. Remember that? Mm, I do remember Fig. Uh, like, the closest thing here is is the Ori games. Was it both Ori's or just the second one that came to Switch? Uh, but even oh, there, I don't think I knew that. Yeah, at, at least at least the second Ori is on Switch. I think both of them. But even there, Moon Studios is an independent studio. Okay. That was just a publishing deal. So that may have been written into the contract from day one for, for all we know. Uh, and that, that that would go multi-platform, but this is like, you know, Microsoft's own rare since 2000, what, three? Ever. A Four? long time ago. Like, yeah. Microsoft's own rare for like 20 years, right? Pre-360. Uh, yeah. Yes. Avatars. Yes. So, uh, there's also, there's also some, so like, that one, like, Grub and, and Totillo both have said, like, hey, I've, like, heard definitively that they are thinking about bringing this game to PlayStation. Sea of Thieves, specifically. Yes. Yeah. There's, there's some squishier talk about maybe Hi-Fi Rush also getting a multi-platform release. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that's kind, of, that's kind of all that's being said right now. Those are the rumors, but, you know, that sure does raise some questions about what Microsoft's strategy is going forward and where they're at with things. Uh. I mean, I imagine where they're at with things is the Xbox is not selling that well. Yeah, it's kind of impossible to look at this without the context of what's been going on the last few months or like some of the signs that have been emerging the last few months. Oh, wait, wait, uh, what? About the, how, how the, the Xbox is, uh, how it's faring. Mm. Um, not that well. A, there was a market research group. I can't remember the name of it. I should pull that up. I could probably actually find it real fast. There, a, a, there was a market research firm that put out a report at the end of last year that the PS5 had outsold the Series X three to one uh, across the world, nationwide or sorry, um, worldwide. I assume that is right. Not in the I, states. Let me let me pull that up. Okay, it's hard to say because I mean, again, data comes in from so many different sources internationally. So also, yeah. sorry, that was the X and S. I was about to say, is that just the X or also the S? Um, 
like I I could um three to one is quite a bit, but you know, I it's always been a stronger PlayStation market in Europe and uh in Japan. Well and then the PlayStation five I think has actually been outpacing some of its expectations, especially with its sort of, you know, like hardware light launch in terms of like the the number of consoles they were able to get out at the outset. Oh availability. Yeah, yeah availability. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, here it is. Amp- Ampere Analysis is the uh, is the research firm that reported that uh, PS5 outsold Series X and S by a ratio of three to one last year. Um, also, anecdotally, like I don't know if you saw, there were like a lot of some shocking deals on the Series X going around over the holidays. I did, I did see, see some that. of those. Yeah. Like it was it was on sale for three forty nine for like kind of a while. This yeah. was not like an over like a one day sale or something. It was like for a bit. I want to say it was the Diablo bundle, even <laughs> that mm. you could get the console and Diablo four for three forty nine. In some cases, I believe. Um, and so, look, they've got a lot of studios now. They've got a lot of games, a lot of very good games. Um, sure, that seems like a like a play. Do you do you think the you guys have been doing this a long time? I respect. So have opinions. you? No, I've been covering it a long time. You guys have been. I've been making videos of you guys for a long time. Vinny, I, let's be real. Let's, let's not overstate our importance here, okay? You've been doing this just about, almost as long okay. as we have. I've been doing this forever, and I'm always right. Uh, uh, so that's why I want to hear your opinion. Okay. Do you think Do you think the uh, XS split was a mistake? No. not. No? I mean, based on how much the S has moved units, I don't think so at all. I'm slightly more on the side of it's not that I think the concept was a mistake. It's mm. that I think they their branding was a mistake. Hmm. Just how think, they marketed it. I think they did a shitty job naming these consoles and explaining what the differences were. Yeah. And I think that has led to more market confusion and people like just not necessarily being able to just immediate PS5. I know what that is. Bought yeah, it. Yeah. Got yeah, it. Yeah. Done. Xbox Series X S. What yeah. am I buying here? Sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. They ran and it's not that a... hard to suss out, but there are people yeah. who just don't want to. Yeah, I, I agree that the branding is kind of a mess or just not very descriptive. But it, and most people, I think, are just looking at the price, though. You know, yeah. especially at launch when people were saying, "Okay, I can get an Xbox for four ninety nine or two ninety nine." Yeah, I know what's in my budget, so I'm just going to go for that, and I think that's fine. I mean, now that these, now that the X is like. <laughs> temporarily dropping to within a stone's throw of the s price it's certainly a muddier conversation do you think it's it's unfortunate because the x is a good console it's a very good console it's you know there are a couple of things i like slightly better about the ps5 but generally speaking i think it's a great piece of hardware and it's certainly a big course correction from where things were at when the xbox one launched but it's just I don't think they've been able to get that foothold. Yeah, it's it seems it seems dire. Um, I also got interested in Game Pass numbers after this all this stuff came out and went looking. Um, there was a piece by Paul Tassi on Forbes a couple months, three months ago, mm. that pointed out that I don't think Microsoft has come out and said they are no longer reporting Game Pass numbers, but they have not reported Game Pass numbers in like almost two years. I think now. Huh. Uh, Remember Game Subscription Pass was, numbers, you mean? Yeah, Game Pass numbers were going up like precipitously during mm-hmm. the, the pandemic. Um, and they hit 25 million at some point, and they have not. And that was like beginning of 2022, I want to say. Uh, let me double check. Yes, that's right. January 2022, basically two years ago, they said Game Pass has hit 25 million, and they have mm-hmm. not officially reported an increase since then. Interesting. Uh, do you think also, that has anything to do with the lawsuit stuff they were facing? Nah. I okay. think it's probably just hitting saturation on the install base of the consoles, I well, would guess. Well, it's I mean, that. I'd, I think it's also part of the larger move toward just not giving anyone much in the way of data when it comes to game stuff anymore, uh, especially in the U.S. It just feels like if there isn't a reason to get out there and brag about your numbers, never give anyone your well, numbers. Well, that, that's, that's kind of the assumption. I don't, I don't know if you remember, like, mid- uh, Xbox One generation, they came out and said, "Hey, we're not going to report console sales anymore." Yeah, and it was really easy to look at that and go, "Yeah, okay, I'm sure there's a good reason you don't want to talk about your hardware numbers anymore." Mm-hmm. That was when they moved to engagement, right? That was when they started trumpeting, like you know, like Xbox gamers have en- been engaged for <laughs> X hundred million hours. <laughs> we have engaged the Xbox gamers, yeah, like yeah, it was it was just like how long are players playing our games, not how many of them are we selling anymore. So like, yeah, it's easy to look at this and 
that context and, and be like, okay, maybe Game Pass numbers have also kind of flatlined. Yeah. Uh, Tassie also pointed out in this piece that uh, Satya Nadella's uh, compensation package, like there, there's no longer a Game Pass like growth target tied ah. to his compensation anymore <laughs> as well. Got out um, of that one somehow. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. Like, I don't, who knows what all is going on inside of Microsoft with and, and how they're, you know, progress toward their goals is going and what they might be shifting strategically internally. But like if the consoles are not moving and Game Pass has kind of plateaued. Yeah. What's the next move? Yeah. They got to do something more. They got to do something. I don't know where X cloud is at these days in terms of like making that a thing that just anybody could play on any system or Mm -hmm. platform. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Or where that gets bundled in. Right. Shipping. Shipping games on other, like shipping your exclusives on competitors' platforms just kind of feels like bailing water to me, especially one as old as Sea of Thieves. Okay, I'm going to need you not to use that <laughs> metaphor right now. Why is that? <laughs> because of the water in right. my basement. <laughs> okay, so I thought it was a nice, fun tie in with no, a pirate ship game. Yeah, yeah. Totally right. It's just, unfortunately, I'm a little sensitive about that right now. Fair. Right, are you saying, uh, are you saying their, their ship is sinking, maybe? Oh, uh, God. Uh, let's, let's not go that far. All right. <laughs> Quite um, yet. All hands on deck. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I, they have a lot of studios. They went on their big buying spree. They've now got their their what they wanted in their golden goose for mobile, right? They they got king, and they're going to yeah. probably put pivot over there. And maybe you know, that push. was the most important part of the deal. That's what they kept saying. Uh huh. Um, look, it, it is a thing that they could not break into organically, which uh, I, I believe them on that front at least. The, the, they were they just could not get into mobile game stuff. But yeah, I, I I don't know. Well, I guess we'll see. Like, kind of armchair quarterbacking is God of War, Last of Us, just stronger than Game Pass as a as a thing to put somebody in a PlayStation Five versus put someone on an Xbox platform. Mm, I don't know. I I tend to think that I tend to think that PlayStation's like historic brand loyalty trumps any one given exclusive yeah, that could like, be fair. like there was just 25 plus year almost 30 years of playstation legacy at this point that like you know like well, in, in games in games like playstation is basically second only to nintendo in terms of like the buy-in from like the diehard fans yeah and i think like also i mean, i don't mean this to be like insulting or anything but just realistically microsoft has dominated for exactly one console generation yeah ever yeah. You're saying it could be an anomaly, not a uh, yeah, sustainable position. I've also had that thought as we get deeper into this generation, and like you know, the Xbox One was like a pretty clear whiff for a lot of very defined reasons. But like, yeah, like you said, the Series X is like a fine console. Like, I, I think I think I probably I prefer the PS5 on balance by a little bit. Yes, but, by but a very series, slight margin. But the but the Series X is like you know light years past where the Xbox One was. But like they just have not gotten it back. So, and I so, think, and again, I think having not a lot of games to offer when that console came out probably did them a very big disservice in terms of getting, apart from the branding stuff, I think that also probably went a long way to be like, when people were making those holiday decisions, when those new consoles were coming out, they're like, yeah, I mean, Halo is eventually going to come out, but, mm. you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, they, they kind of have not figured out what to do with their existing properties. I mean, you could argue if there should even be more Halo or Gears of War games. Yeah. But, but you know, given that that's what they've chosen to pursue, like, I don't think that none of those games have, like, really hit the way they used to. No. And then also just, yeah, like, the first party drought has been so severe for the last year, year and a half. Uh, and it feels like they are starting to get out of that a little bit. Like there had there were some wins last year. Forza, I would call a win. I think Hi Fi Rush coming out of nowhere and people liking it that was a neat th- that was good for them. Yeah, yeah. It's actually it's worth mentioning. Jeff Grubb makes it sound like Tango's star has kind of risen inside of Microsoft mm. because of Hi Hi Fi Rush and how well that was received. So that's yeah. Cool. But you know, I think that they still have some work to do on that front. And like, while they have made a lot of big financial moves uh, to try and correct that, like the number of products that have come out of that, the, those financial moves has, n- there haven't been a lot of them yet. Yeah. yeah ho- that, that, that's change. what kind of just made me think of like, um, you know, there are Sony has marquee things that are very hot right now. Uh, yeah. You know, last of us, extremely hot. Um, you know, Spider-Man, extremely hot. Yeah. Uh, I fucking love psychonauts too, but that wasn't going to sell consoles. Yeah. 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 Things like gears of war is not, 
that that's not the thing right now you know like even halo feels to have kind of fallen off and i don't know if young the youngins are clamoring for master chief uh, certainly my kids are not like when's that next halo game coming out yeah uh, so yeah I, I don't know i, I don't know what they got to do the x brad you're, you've, you're probably one of the only people i know that's spent time on an s like they're not that different right no not really i mean it, it, it's very dependent on the game um you know some some run noticeably better look noticeably better whatever but would you say, uh, is, is it fair for me to say Microsoft hasn't been able to first party make games comparable to the tech in PlayStation 5 games because they have to support the S no, as well? No, that absolutely is not a problem. Okay. Uh, it's, it's just graphical differences, like by and large, because you know, remember the S and X have basically the same CPU in them. Yeah, I know. That, I know and, some of the differences aren't as extreme as sometimes I think they are. And they're, the, they're really just more output than... Yeah. And, and and not. the same man, same amount of main memory, like like it's really just graphical quality that is suffering for the most part on the S. But they weren't able to do the split screen stuff on the on the S, right? For for Boulder's Gate, so there must be some kind of pipeline that's getting clogged up on there. In yeah, terms well that 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 would rendering. that that would go to GPU, yeah, because okay. you're having to support multiple viewports on the same screen. I would <laughs> I would assume. Um, yeah, I, look. I, I'm not saying it's a bad thing if these games come to multiple platforms. I think that's kind of interesting. Um, also, I wonder if it's I wonder if it has anything to do with what they talked about in those court cases of like, no, we'll bring we'll bring stuff to Sony all the time. Like that is uh, Nintendo. Ubisoft's going to publish all our games I'd, in Europe. I, I would guess the second the ink was dry, they were like fucking whatever. <laughs> like yeah. who, whatever, who cares what we said? <laughs> we got yeah, what we, we wanted. You're probably not wrong. Um, yeah, the only reason they would do this at this point if it made actual business sense for them to do sense. it. Yeah, yeah. Like this really is just like the big thing here is just what does this portend for the future of the Xbox brand and the future of Xbox consoles as boxes under your TV? Well, it is uh, still rumored at this point. There are no yeah, yeah, nothing is guaranteed, terms. but I I wouldn't be surprised if it turned out to be true. Uh, yeah, they do have this developer direct coming up on the 18th next Thursday, but mm -hmm. I don't. From what I've seen of those previous ones, that, that 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 does not seem like the kind of place they would announce something like Sea of Thieves coming to PS5. Right. Uh, those those seem to really be focused on like going behind the scenes with developers and talking to them in depth and showing a little bit of new games. Yeah. So uh, this is. This is like you said, the 18th. It's at 3 p.m. Eastern, right in the middle of the day there. But I was looking at the list of stuff, and Indiana Jones is on there. Yeah, like that's the big one to me. Is Machine Games Indiana Jones game is on there. That's a uh, which feels like they've been talking about for ages and haven't shown. Yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah. So, like, what was Wolfenstein Two? It was like 2018. So it's been a while since they shipped yeah. a game. Uh, although they have been shipping some Quake maps. To their credit. Well, as long uh, as they're keeping busy. Yes. Uh, I don't know. I don't have much affinity for Indiana Jones, but I'm curious to see what they do with it. Yeah, me too. Like, that's that's my attitude. I mean, like, look, it's not like those last Indiana Jones movies have been hitting. <laughs> I love Indiana Jones. Last Crusade, I think, is... Fight Me, it's the best Indiana Jones movie. No, you're right. You're right. Okay, good. Good. Um, my wife always is like, what is wrong with you? And I'm like, well, at least we can agree that Temple of Doom is not that good. Of the original trilogy? Yeah, that's the least good. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Brad, what else is on this list? Is it Indiana Jones, um, Avowed, the Obsidian first-person fantasy RPG uh, that looks kind of interesting. Uh, Ara: History Untold, which I had to remind myself is a 4X game. It's basically a Civ-like from the looks of things. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and then Hellblade Two again, which put out Hellblade Two. <laughs> like, <laughs> They're like, going I mean, to, I I'm think. Sure, I'm sure they're. I'm sure they're still hard at work getting that game done. I'm not saying they're just sitting on it or anything, but no, no. It feels like they have been showing and talking about Hellblade Two for such a long time. It has been a bit at this point, uh, and I think they said it's coming out this year, right? Isn't that what uh, they I said? think that was the indication. Yes, at the Game Awards, didn't they just say 2024? Finally, yeah. Um. So anyway, like they've got some games to talk about. Yeah, and then if you're into Elder Scrolls Online. You could watch that after, I guess, some Elder Scrolls Online, a global reveal. Mm -hmm. Elder Scrolls Online 2024. It's, it's one of those games that I'm glad is still kicking around back there. It's, I mean, we're talking about an MMO that still mm -hmm. is going, mm -hmm. that Good still makes them. money. Good for since, them. Since we're talking about Xbox, I saw their, the Minecraft Legends development is ending. Oh. Which that game just came out last, I think, April, wasn't it? 
when development like was there new like stuff like ongoing it? yeah like content new okay. content and stuff i don't think that did did gangbusters yeah i'm guessing that also did not really catch uh i don't know i feel like i have occasion to pull up this list of microsoft first party games like three t- three or four times a year at this point of like it's another xbox milestone let's pull up this list and see what they might talk about or what hasn't right. been detailed or is still in the works and it's still like 20 games they have uh, a lot of studios yeah and uh, a lot of them working on stuff you know yeah like uh like who knows maybe th- like three years three four years from now we look back and you're like yeah they had a real down period but like boy they shipped a lot of cool games once they came out of it i don't know for me it is very much not a well microsoft is doomed like absolutely not like I, there's there's no reason to think that at all it's just that i i have been hoping that this generation would get them more momentum than they have so far been able to muster because again i do think the hardware has been good and i think the the i mean look i don't love the consolidation but if i'm microsoft i think that was per- those were smart purchases on their part i just the games have not manifested in that way and with regularity yet and it just seems like the hardware is just not getting the momentum it needs yeah yeah we'll we'll see if that changes when some of these games come out is perfect dark going to do it and probably not but fable who, who knows fable it's gonna do it what uh, is has double fine announced what they're working on no okay. no no it's been a while actually they must okay. have something in the works presumably like, by now I thought there'd be Psychonauts DLC by this point. Um, I don't but, think they're doing it. I just don't no. think I don't think they're doing anything else with that game right now. I should say, you know, I have nothing against Perfect Dark. I should say, but <laughs> but that one is kind of up there with Gears and Halo for me. Of like, well, I actually Perfect Dark probably has more pent up demand for a new one at this point than those games do. And you know, a Gears game is just, for me. Gears just feels like a dated franchise. Maybe you can reinvigorate it, but like that feels like an old one, mm-hmm. unless. Look, God of War was a dated franchise too, and I think they did good things to revitalize that in a somewhat modern gameplay take on it. I wonder if they can do the same thing for Gears of War. Just that that gameplay was novel at the time, and it, the world has moved so far afield or has iterated so much on the stop and pop, you know, yeah. chainsaw yeah. people yeah. thing. Yeah, there there is no announced Gear Six at the moment. Like nobody, the coalition hasn't said what they're doing officially, but I think the word was they had pivoted back to a Gears game. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of games on this list though. They got a lot, like I said, a lot, we'll, a lot of irons in the fire. Just, um, just give me state of decay three, please. <laughs> uh, you, you'll get it. You'll get Will it. I? Yeah, I you'll get it. Uh, we're back from 2023, 2024, but 2020, the specter of 2023 lingers and maybe not in the, any, well, I guess Spectre's lingering is never used in a positive way, but uh, the layoffs continue. Brad Shoemaker, these are pretty big ones, and yeah. uh, and some of these companies have already had layoffs. Yeah, by percentage, these are like kind of startling. Uh, Unity, the game engine, twenty five percent of its workforce has been cut. Yes, which is eighteen hundred jobs. It's a God. lot of people. Uh, you know, maybe not the surprise, the most surprising thing ever after the ongoing calamity of last year for them. Um, and I think, I think that in their, their new CEO had said they were undergoing something of a reset after he mm-hmm. came in. Uh, so probably not surprising, but that's a lot of people gone from unity. That's yeah. a lot of people, uh, gone from, you know, an extremely widely used engine. Uh, and then Twitch like today. 35 percent of its uh of its workforce god which was 500 uh, yeah. 500 people and like that's a lot that's a lot that's yeah. a lot that's a third of the people that worked at twitch yeah yeah uh, also like i mean it feels crappy to even like think of it in these terms but like i forget what the total number was last year it was like eleven thousand people in the game industry or something like that it's between nine and something and 11 i think yeah and like and like here we are at 2500 <laughs> Almost not twenty three hundred, just between these two companies a week end of the year. I, I think um, according to that Verd article, and this sounded familiar. There were big layoffs at Twitch last year. There were some, yes, four hundred people lost I'd, their job. Yeah, I had forgotten about that. Oh, that was part of the eighteen right. thousand. Yes, that, that was Amazon laid off. That's right. That's when Amazon did those huge layoffs when all the big Valley tech companies were laying off five figures. So, like that, 
if you're saying 500 people is 35 percent, that's like a significant decline in the headcount at twitch yes uh a massive w- massive one. um it's it, i don't know it's wild i i don't know what's i don't know their internals i don't know what's going on with reporting aside from the like obvious human costs like i think alex you and i were talking you you mentioned it too it's like we use this platform we use this platform like it's what is part mean of our services business. right yeah, yeah. um yeah, that's and it's not wild. like look. It's not as if we're like regularly talking to people at Twitch on the and as it is, but it's just like the fewer people they have there, the fewer people you have to talk to when something actually goes wrong. And I just I don't know, man. Like I know they're they're still part of Amazon. I'm not saying the servers are going to start breaking immediately just because they laid off like 500 people, but like you know, as a user of that platform, like this is very alarming. We, even uh, completely separate from just the Jesus Christ, the human cost of this aspect of this. Yeah, and, and you know, seeing some of the people laid off, it's those are people who've been there a long time, and they're 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 you're right embedded people that know the services and the and the tech there. So yeah, um, that's yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I mean, what's going on is everything's broken. Like, that's yeah, it, just, that's, that's, that's the, the really broad spectrum fucking, you know, not satisfying at all answer is that everybody's business is kind of broken right now. Yeah. I mean, this, this statement from the CEO reads very much like more of the, we, we went on a hiring spree during the pandemic growth, just assuming it would last forever, which of course it did not. For some time now, the organization has been sized based upon where we optimistically expect our business to be in three or more years, not where we're at today. So, growth businesses yeah so it's like hey we hired a bunch of people because we thought that we were just everything all the numbers were just going to keep going up it's weird how every time there's an example of that not proving to be true no one learns that lesson look is a company ever going to be like nah, i mean we just don't grow and we we try to we, we do a conservative uh estimate this year like you we, we you and i and and brad we've all been at companies that are like where's your 15 percent yeah i mean 20%? not a publicly traded one absolutely not no, I would we're, probably no, we're, trade a company. No, we're, no we're I'm saying running. a publicly traded company oh, would yes. never say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're running a lifestyle corporation here. That's right. We're yeah, happy right. where we're at. <laughs> that's right. Lifestyle company. I uh, yeah, twenty. I remember every year it's like we need that. T- we need to be growing twenty percent, right? Uh, like places like CBS, where it's like, what if we didn't? <laughs> what if we were just okay not growing twenty percent? I'm okay not, with that. Not compatible with our socioeconomic system. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's a lot of people. Hire, hire good people. There are a lot of good people. Yeah. I, I saw, we know personally some of the people who've been laid off. They're extremely talented. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, so these people would be an asset to whatever company wants to pick them up. Uh, Brad, this last one, I'll tell you. We were talking about Twin Peaks, and there were storylines in Twin Peaks on the Watchcast where you're like, this one again? I'm kind of getting tired of this storyline. Hope they just wrap this one up soon. Brad, I feel this way about our next story. Yeah, I thought about talking about this last week and didn't, and then... <laughs> I, You know what? Frankly, it's mostly because I am very excited about a new Nintendo Switch. A and, new Nintendo and, Switch. And I am happy for an excuse to speculate about it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, uh, this came out of... We talked about gamesindustry.biz is like annual wrap up news mm-hmm. wrap up last last week uh, they also they also get a bunch of analysts on the hook every year to like predict things for the coming year and uh dr sirkin toto uh is one of the analysts they uh of Canton games is, is uh-huh. the company in, in tokyo that he works for but uh he made some predictions you you have to assume people in that position are making these predictions in an, an informed way right based on what they know I guess like the actual news here, I mean, he's predicting the Switch 2 will be out this year. We kind of already knew that. He's predicting it will be an iteration on the previous Switch. Which That was the part that made me deflate a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's like, uh, you know, okay, pretty safe to assume that it's going to be another handheld that connects to a TV. Right. Um, the actual news here is that he's predicting it'll be 400 bucks. Yeah, that's expensive. Which, which 299 is where the previous Switch launched at, so that's worth knowing. I mean, the hope is that they are planning on putting some hardware in there that will justify that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, who when can you say, say though? I, when I, you say iteration, right? Like, 
that could go a lot of ways, Brad. Like you said, is it an iteration on the core conceit of the Switch? Yeah. Like you'll have a thing that is a handheld and a TV, or is it that's an iteration on like hardware? Yeah, that's what he's saying. Like Nintendo might add some bells and whistles to the device, but it will be similar to the current Switch. Yeah. Is what he's saying, which I absolutely would. If the thing is just a Switch feature for feature, but with faster guts in it, I'm sure that's going to be enough for the entire market. That will do but just it, fine. No, nobody will not buy that because because it's just a faster Switch. Yeah, but if it's it, what if it's not a faster switch? What if it's a switch with better battery life, screens, better? No, they controls, can't do that again. They can't. Like they can't. Better haptics. Oh, oh, on the you controllers. mean? Oh, you mean like just long, like another rev of this switch? Like literally oh, bells and whistles. Not. Like absolutely not internal not. guts. Absolutely not. They like, can't look, pull that off. The thing. The thing is. That thing was outdated the day it came out. That's what <laughs> I mean. Point. That. That's what scares me. Like Look, I'm not saying it, I'm not saying it won't be outdated in some way or another. Like it won't certainly. I I would bet dollars to donuts it will not be as powerful as the current generation of home consoles oh, as it ex- exists right now. Not. Absolutely, but not. they cannot just say, "Well, it's a little more powerful." <laughs> but they uh, but they also can't go too far because they're they're gonna unless they put a line in the sand, which I don't think they'll do. It's gonna have to run. The Switch will have to run the same games the Switch 2 runs. Yeah. So, uh, well, you we think hope. they'll cut not them necessarily. off? You think We'd they hope. Would, not necessarily. Wasn't that, I think that was the word out of some analyst chatter last year, right? That they were still like debating internally if backwards compatibility was actually important or not. Oh, man. You think they'd leave the Switch behind? I think that would extremely suck. Yes, <laughs> I think, it would. I think, You're I right. Think, I think that would be some bullshit. Uh, I th- you got to get a, you got to rebrand then you got to not call this some any kind of switch to or anything like that you got to be you need a new console you're going to have some angry nintendo fans but look would i would i want to play tears of the kingdom on a better switch hell yeah yeah I, do i want my switch games to run on that thing of course if you're telling me i got to buy that thing again no way Mm-mm. and if you're telling me switch 2 games don't work on the switch i think they've made a mistake in that Wait, sense. the other way you around. Mean switch, switch games work, switch on, the games switch work on the Switch 2. I'm saying both. I'm saying... Mm. Okay, make, well, that one is probably not That's definitely happen. not happening. So, like, if you are saying that, like, you buy the Switch 2, and it's not an Xbox Series X and S situation, I think you're going to have a lot of Switch owners that are still angry. Oh, that's definitely not happening. So you think this is a clean line, 100%. and you, you get yeah. Switch 2 games? I yeah. mean, they they might ship cross-gen games. Like, they might do the same thing. That, yeah. You think they're so, two different SKUs, though. So yeah, but yeah, those those would be you know those would be developed in tandem with those considerations in mind from the get go. So you think it's a, it's not a this is this works on both systems on the Switch Two side of things. It, it won't it won't be an ongoing like blanket policy. I'll say that. Okay. Like I, okay. I could I could yes I could see them shipping especially like downloadable games and like stuff that's less demanding on both because I mean yeah. that, that install base is nothing to sneeze at you know. Like, yeah. That's a lot of people to sell games to even while you're waiting for them to buy into the new one. Uh, but the, but those will be case by case. I think that that would be just like it went on like the Xbox and PlayStation. But you could see you could see let's say the next big Mario game is a Switch Two only thing and doesn't run on a Switch. Definitely. definitely. Okay. In fact, okay. I think all of their marquee first party games need to be that. Okay. Well, I mean, Sony got away with it, you know, like that. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Horizon, it's a weird. It's a weird market now. Like Forbidden West looked great on a PS5 and still ran on a PS4. But you're saying the bigger sin would be backwards compatibility, switch stuff would, not coming up to switch to. That would be a real bummer. Yeah. <laughs> Especially with as many like indie games as people have invested in on that platform. Mm hmm. <laughs> what if the switch to does? And then we're all speculating and we're having a good of course, time. But what if, the switch 2, city. what if the switch two comes out? It is a line in the sand. There are switch to only games and that thing is still underpowered for what they're trying to push onto the switch to. Mm. I felt that. What, I what, felt the Switch never really met its potential, right? What, in terms what, of the games they were trying to run. What's your definition of underpowered? T- like Breath of the Wild slowdown. Uh, well, that that one's tough because you know you can you can push any hardware too far. That's what I'm saying. Uh, that's that. Some of that is just down to like developer restraint. Nintendo uh, should have it. Uh, typically, they do. Like Zelda is kind of a weird edge case where. Most of their games run extremely well. You're even right. on Odyssey the runs hardware. perfectly fine. Yeah, like Odyssey's great. Like Zelda's, Odyssey's great. Of course, Zelda. The scope of Zelda is like pretty, you know, pretty pretty intense compared to most of their games. 4K Tears of the Kingdom. Mm, I may have Let's bad go. news for you. Let's go. Maybe we'll uh, get 1440p. 
the uh, I mean, the, the current rumors, I think I may have said this before, the current rumors are pegging this thing at like around a base PS4 level of performance. 1080p. But with but with DLSS. So they okay. would be able to squeeze a lot of extra performance out of it that way. Uh, but Half it, hour battery life. It's looking like no 4K output. Even upscaled? Yeah, even mm-hmm. upscaled. Uh, it'll probably be 1080p or really uh, I'm sure I'm sure that dock will output 4K native. Like I'm sure I'm sure you will get a native 4K signal out of that dock, but yeah, I bet I bet internal resolution or even upscaled resolutions like 1440 at most. Do you think the upscaler will be in the dock from the no, sound of things? Faster, right? Um, I doubt. I don't know. Actually, who yeah. knows what they might do? That Nintendo. A- they who knows what they might do is has been the thing for 40 years. Um. I think that's it for the news. Yeah. Uh, emails. We got an email address here. Podcast at nextlander.com. Podcast at nextlander.com. Brad Shoemaker, you got an email or two here. Uh, I do have one or two, in fact. Fantastic. Cody from Roswell, New Mexico. Yes. Uh, I was listening to the podcast Laser Time recently, and Alex was mentioned what? along with along with Dan Reichert. Alex mentioned <laughs> uh, when one of the hosts talked briefly about WWE 2K14's Ultimate Bruncheon. Oh, God. Uh, I was curious if you remember this event and if you got to meet the Ultimate Warrior or if he just stopped by and bounced. Oh, fuck. I just find it neat when one of you is mentioned on others' podcasts. Oh, boy. That was a real year uh, of, it, of wrestling game coverage, let me tell you. Uh, I probably have told some version of this story before, but. So I actually ended up in the same room as the Warrior twice that year. Um, Quick quick preface here. When I was a little kid and I liked wrestling, the Ultimate Warrior was one of my favorite wrestlers. Then I found out he was a virulent homophobe and kind of a piece of shit. So that really colored a lot of my perception of him. But he also got out of WWE for a very long time and was not welcomed back into the fold for a very long time. Um, he came back for WWE 2K14. That was how they in- reintroduced him kind of back into the fold. And at the first preview event I went to, which was in New York, mm. Triple H was there and introduced Warrior. And that was where I got to interview Warrior. And that sucked ass. <laughs> Great. Um, he, was I there with you for that? Or is that a no, I was alone. solo thing? Okay. I was alone. This is in 2013. This is before you okay. came out here. Okay. Um, he... has zero sense of humor had zero sense of humor uh and like i was asking him questions about the game and he knew very little about it other than he knew what video games were uh at one point i made a very light joke about the fact that his hair was very big in that game and i was like "Eh, i don't know if they you know they they gave you a little extra volume and then he got real mad (laughs) and was like oh man what are you playing this game for the fucking hair oh Uh, wow yeah like real like just not happy um so that kind of ended the interview at that point. Um, and so when I went out for SummerSlam, which is the thing that we are talking about here, and this is a two-pronged story. This is, the first part is the warrior part. <laughs> I went to the Ultimate Bruncheon. Uh-huh. Uh, I was there. Uh, Dan was there. Harry, uh, Henry, who we just mentioned, that, well, he was there for that uh, covering. I forget for who, but he was covering that show. A, a couple other people we knew. And so we went to this big brunch that was in like this, uh, you know, ballroom in whatever hotel was near uh, the L.A. Convention Center, which is where I think uh, the the Staples Center is where they were having SummerSlam. And they introduced Warrior after, you know, everyone's kind of been sitting and eating for a while and he came up and he was supposed to give a speech. And he spent a solid, I'm going to say, 30 seconds to a minute just staring at this picture of himself that was like up on the wall. And then started talking to it like it was what? he was talking to another like a person that he knew. What? It was I, I don't remember the full content of what he said, but it was very much like he was trying to do a dramatic conversation with himself about himself and what the warrior is and what it means and all this other stuff. And we were all just kind of sitting there going, uh-huh. <sighs> and after a while, he said something about the video game and then left. Wait, sorry, let me just make sure I understand what's happening here. The ultimate brunch in was just was a it- bunch of journalists at SummerSlam that was there that were there for part of the video game promotion. And so we were there and they invited us to do as part like there was also a preview event around playing the game and stuff like that. So But named for the Ultimate Warrior? Yeah, because he was the big DLC pre-order bonus and him coming back was at the time kind of a big deal for wrestling. <laughs> 
And then at this ultimate bruncheon, the majority of the time is him monologuing to a, a, a picture on the wall. I don't know if it was the majority of the time, but that was how it started. <laughs> or how it felt, maybe. Yeah. Uh, that's wild, man. Now, the other side of that story, which I'm not sure if Henry mentioned this also, is that was also the year that Ric Flair got Jim Ross fired by showing up to the panel thing, the preview event at night, fucking wasted, and just completely overtaking the show. Jim Ross was supposed to be emceeing it, and he lost control almost immediately as soon as Ric Flair came out and just started talking and rambling, and... Then after the fact, apparently a co- like some time a couple days within that span, Jim Ross was fired from the WWE. Really? All you can say to that is woo. <laughs> yeah. Ric Flair got up there. He was talking over everyone. He was uh, like Rey Mysterio and uh, I want to say Steve, maybe Steve Austin. I don't forget. who. I, there were a couple of people up there with him and they barely got to say anything because Rick was fucking hammered was telling all kinds of sloppy stories. At one point started talking, like, this is admittedly tragic, his son did die, and he was talking about how when his son died, he put his Hall of Fame ring on his son's finger before he was buried. Aww. And everyone in the room is here for a video game event. Mm. I want to emphasize this as hard as possible. These are video game journalists in the room. This is not Ric Flair story time. Mm. This is not like him doing shoot interviews. <laughs> We're there for a video game preview. I, I'm right? guessing in Ric Flair's world, it's always Ric Flair story time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. So that was a very eventful year for wrestling game coverage and me. Huh. I, I can't help but just wonder, uh, when, when the warrior asked you, what are you playing these games for the hair? <laughs> yeah. It's just been like, yeah? <laughs> what if I, you just I was, said yes? I was already on such like tender hooks and sure. just like so uncomfortable that I think all I said was like, nah, man, I'm just kidding. You know, I said something <laughs> like that. And he was just like, you could tell he just was not having it. Yeah. Right. 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 And then man. again, not that long after I think WrestleMania, which is where they inducted him into the Hall of Fame, he died. Yeah. I had heard on that Vince McMahon podcast I listened to a while back about how he died and like just woof. It was like eight months after that thing that I just described. Warrior was dead. Didn't Jeez. didn't he didn't he die within like four hours of the broadcast he was on that night or something? Like he went on Monday Night Raw the night after WrestleMania, I believe, and gave a speech which really sounded like he was delivering that, his own eulogy, even that, though he super could not have known he was going to die. And then yes, the next like either the next morning or later that evening or something. He was in a parking lot and just had a heart attack and died. Yeah, like I haven't seen the footage, but they made it sound like he just looked like death warmed over on that broadcast and then like promptly died right after. He did not look good. Wild. Rob that was wrestlers. a weird one, man. That was a weird time. Wrestling, man. Yeah. Wrestling. Uh, just, can I ask? Wrestling story never ends well. No. 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 That was the biggest takeaway from that, the, the listening to that. It was behind the bastards. I, people frequently ask every time I reference this. It was the six part behind the bastards series on Vince McMahon. Yeah. The biggest takeaway from that was nobody should go into wrestling. No. <laughs> nobody should go. I mean, I get safer now. Much but, safer now, yes. But still, just like the, <laughs> the the chance of meeting a bad end in that sport seems so astronomically high. Yes, especially if it was between the years of like nineteen seventy uh, and let's just say two thousand and ten. Speaking speaking of bad ends, I, I'm yeah. just going to ask you now since we're talking about it. What what's up with this A twenty four Von Erich movie? Is that something I should care about? I mean, if you're interested in it, yeah. I mean, Is the it? Von Erichs. Uh, you should go watch the Dark Side of the Ring about the Von Erichs if you just want. Oh, like, I've watched a real, it. Oh, you did, yeah. Right, and, so you and, know the story. I've, I've watched that and the Tales from the Territories. Okay, uh, so. I, I by all accounts that movie's good. I haven't seen it yet. Okay. Um, but I, I it has apparently one not so great part. Bringing it all back is that the guy they got to play Ric Flair in it is apparently fucking awful at playing Ric Flair. Uh, but everyone else is good from what I've gathered. Okay, I thought I thought I saw like they hadn't actually like contacted Kevin Von Erich about the movie until no, after he's they out made there it. doing promo for oh, it. Is he involved with it? Okay, yeah, he's been. I mean, I don't know if he was involved in the making of it, but he has been out there doing promotional work for it okay that's good he seems that's like a nice guy yes no he if anything like he, he is remarkably well adjusted for what he has been through mm. any all right. other emails all right uh one more from nathan 
They have goddamn Twin Peaks cardboard cutouts on ParamountShop.com. Sure. Um, I found out they have a Paramount Plus merch shop, and a lot of the Twin Peaks stuff is what the kids would call mid. Mm -hmm. Uh, The diamond in the rough, however, is how many cardboard cutouts they sell. It's sort of insane. My favorite I wanted to share was this one of the giant. Okay. Uh, love is the it show seven feet always. tall? Uh, let's see here. I hope not. I hope it's re- I hope it's regular, like five foot. Five it's foot. seventy. It's seventy six inches. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. what is that? Six and change. That could be life size. Six, six and six and a third feet sure. tall. Hey, let me pull out my, my tape measure here. <laughs> I believe yeah. is what that is. Material cardboard. Yeah. Well, that would make sense. Um, the problem for me is that I made the mistake of clicking through to the store to yes. see more of these cutouts. And like, look, I understand people get old. Like, I'm not. There's nothing against that. But all the cutouts are of like what I assume are the characters from the Return. Oh, definitely, yes. And I am not ready to see that yet. Yeah, like no, I, you're not ready. Like, it'll be fine when we get to the show. You know, it's fine. You know, the passage of time will be evident and everything. But like right now, while we're still in the middle of the 1990 stuff, uh-huh. seeing all the characters in old age is just fucking my brain over. Okay. I have to ask this question. It's dark, but I have to ask it. Is there a Laura Palmer one? Yes. And is she alive? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. There is, in, there is, in fact, a Laura Palmer standee. Okay, so it, it already it clears the extremely low bar that the Funko Pop failed to meet. Okay, great. Which is Good the Laura Palmer is dead Funko Pop. Great, great. The ones I the ones here are Audrey Cooper and Laura Palmer. Okay. That I have seen. I. I should stop looking at these. Don't buy them. Don't do it. So that's the Paramount store? Paramount store? Yes, ParamountShop.com. If okay, we still is- worked there and maybe could get an employee discount, I would say maybe think about it, but don't yeah. don't, don't give them the money they're for about, that. They're about, about 45 bucks a piece. Ooh, no. Yeah, oh, that sounds... No. That's pretty expensive. I, I'm just... I'm looking at this as well, Brad, and I just... I can't believe... I went to the CBS shop first. I... I had no idea merch like this even existed for sale. Like, I didn't know people were buying a ton of Picard merch or. I don't know that they are, Vinny. (laughs) They made it. I don't know that a ton of people are buying it. I didn't. I had no idea any of this stuff. That said, I would actually love a cardboard cutout of Captain Picard. Well, they're not even. There's a Picard Chateau Picard Vineyard t-shirt. There's. I th- a, a poster that a metal sign that says this, this facility has gone blank days without an assimilation. Like they're merching it up over here. They sure Look, are. I'm, I mean, I'm on the Twin Peaks page right now. Uh, what do we got here? Some stuff I don't recognize. Like there's a mm-hmm. ring on here with an insignia on it. I'm guessing I'll find out what that's about later. Uh, we might get some spoilers. I don't know. We should maybe pull uh, the ripcord. I don't want to spoil anything. This is kind of cool. You can get a keychain that is a like a room tag from the Great Northern. Okay, that's neat. That's not so bad. That's pretty neat. Uh, let's see here. Can I get Can I get my Bookhouse Boys Iron On Patch? Uh, I, that better be on there. If it's not on about. there again, I'm pretty sure you can find no, one of those I, on Etsy if you have to. I already checked. They are absolutely on Etsy. Okay. okay. Huh. One-Eyed Jack's fleece hoodie. Okay, I don't know if that's I don't think me. I'd want to advertise that, <laughs> I don't, personally. I don't know if that's the one. That's just me. <laughs> I don't know if that's the one. Yeah. yeah. Packard Sawmill sweatshirt. Oh, you can uh, get that You can get that broken heart pendant. You, you can get... What? Oh, it's just a sticker what? of... Dr. Jacoby's two-tone sunglasses. Oh, do you like put them over your glasses? I don't or know. Something? No, it's just a sticker. No. Okay. Nah, nah. I'm good on that front. They have a lot of stuff. I'm looking at this now too. Man, that is a lot of stuff on there. Man. Especially for a show that came out in 2017. <laughs> I guess so. I mean, look. Did one season in 2017. I mean, granted, yes. Twin Peaks, Cultural Institution, all that. I'm just saying. Uh, would you like a Twin Peaks Red Room Chevron washable gator for <laughs> no <laughs> for you know not remotely <laughs> for, you know for all of your uh, uh, all of your needs no I, my needs are met thank you okay well look I'm gonna contact them just to see who's doing their merch store because apparently you could just put stuff up pretty easy you know I don't I don't need a thermal travel mug that says damn good coffee on it 
Honestly, you don't I know if the coffee's good or not. I honest, don't need the mug to honestly, tell me. Honestly, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of like in-universe merch, like that patch, like things that are like replicas yeah. of, yes. of props and other things. Or, yeah, or the, or the Great Northern keychain yeah. room tag. Like that's yeah. kind of cool, but yeah, yes, I'm that with stuff you. can be fun. Man, yeah. Okay, I'll tell you, hey, look, a Twin Peaks flask. That could work. I don't need that. As long as it, as long as it's a flask that somebody had in the, in the show, that's a prop. It's a real prop. Anyway, is there a chess set? I'm not seeing one. Nope. The All tiny right. little chess set like he's got. He's just missing out. Yeah, they're not looking to capitalize on season two as much. <laughs> they just forget about that one. Yeah, well, they try to. All right, is that gonna do it for the emails? Yeah, let's call it there. All right, that's it for the emails. And that's going to wrap it up for this week's show. Speaking of Twin Peaks, we got a bunch of Twin Peaks happening over on the Watchcast. You can check that out over at patreon.com slash nextlander. A bunch of other stuff going up there soon. We'll have uh, probably next week a Never Been a Better podcast going up. We'll be recording that this week. I believe on deck for that is uh, Bacalar and uh, Reichert are coming in for that one. So you can join us there. Uh, again, next week over on the Patreon. I've uh, got a video up there. I tried to take the list of games I had. We're trying to get our Game of the Year top 10 personal ones together. So over on the Patreon, you could see me uh, sitting there with a spreadsheet going through the games, trying to figure out a bad Caravella system of, is this, is this <clears> what's <throat> down a little? Ah, let's just make a new category. Kind of maybe so, so let's just make the list 50 games, you know. Uh, nope, not allowed. Not allowed. So you can see me hemming and hawing over games, uh, talking about games for like two hours. It was uh, surprising how long one can go, sit there and hem and haw over games. Mm -hmm. um, that's over on the Patreon. A uh, bunch of stuff there. bunch of tears there. And know that your dollar goes to support us. Can't do it without you there. Uh, tiers from $5, $10. And there is a tier there, the Mysterious Benefactors tier, which gets their name read on this here show. Brad Shoemaker, would you do mm -hmm. the honors? You know, I think I might give it a shot. All right. Been away from this podcast long enough. I think the throat is hail enough. If I can just tear myself away from looking at this MTV Total Request Live merch page. Oh, that's never going to happen. Uh, which is going to be a, a struggle, but uh, here we go. Also, I'm going to read these in reverse order. <gasps> Try and stop me. Uh, Tyler Treese, David Campos, Matthew Herrig, Steve Lynn, Andrew Slosky, Edward Chick, Matt Clements Jr., It the JP, Alex Wu, Andrew Teepkin, Randy Duax, Brian Murphy, Razo Fato, Mega Crane, Andrew Jackson, Fantasticasm89, uh, Statics, Jad Rita, Bunny Fiend, comma, The, John McGinnis, Robert Fisher, Gary Pedgsky, Deirdre Approves of Rothgalls, Jerry Lee, Mark Wilhelm, Evan Cook, John Hubbard, Skywarp, Brian Lucier, Kelly F., Infelicitous Rips, RRE, Ryan Waterman, and Sean Miller. And of course... Thanks to everyone who has supported us over on Patreon, watched our streams, listened to the podcast. Again, couldn't do it without you. We uh, love you. I said it. Wow. I know. Bold words, man. I know. I know. It's 2024. I'm, I'm trying to really get out there, break these barriers down, break these barriers down. Um, no, thanks, everybody. Uh, we're going to go, like we said, we're, we're thinking about stuff this week, how we're... Um, rearranging things looking at things like i said for the podcast we're going to try and go back to focusing at least on one game uh that we all share for a bit of time there and then kind of cycle through other stuff um a little bit maybe have some deeper conversations on those games kind of get back to some of that stuff it's hard it's hard to keep the 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 car in the right lane when all the games start coming out throughout the year but we're going to try and refocus there along with some other stuff we're looking at and we'll have those talks when it is I guess I was going to say appropriate, but that sounds like I'm talking to my kids. <laughs> we'll talk about it when it's appropriate. We'll talk about it when we've come up with a good, when you good graduate from college, we'll talk about it. <laughs> when, when the time is right, some have stuff you, in the works. So have you talked to your children about content. 
<laughs> we don't want to talk about inappropriate content here. That's that's really my big thing. Uh, we'll be doing some Prince of Persia. If you're listening to this uh, at the time on Thursday, we'll be doing that on uh, in the grab bag slot there. That's when the embargo's up. So we'll be able to uh, show you some of that. We'll probably start from the beginning, uh, not give too much away, and maybe we can jump into some later game stuff. Uh, show you a little bit a little bit more of the, the powers in there. So tune in for that on Thursday, and we'll be back again with another stream on Friday. Thank you, Alex Navarro. Thank you. Thank you, Brad Shoemaker. Mm-hmm. And we'll be back next week. 